I believe what's just happened is we've had a proposal here on field one, ladies and gentlemen. And I think that that's a yes! Well, hello and welcome to Swimming Action here at the Invictus Games for 2023. It's a pleasure to be with you today as we welcome you to the swimming for the first time at these games here at the Rheinbad's Swimming Pool Complex. We've got a lot of action coming up for you in this session. So really looking forward to seeing all the swimmers go at it in freestyle, backstroke, and also in breaststroke as well. And right at the end of the session, we will have the heats in the four by 50 meter freestyle relay. Yeah, so this session here is all heats. And uh, we're looking forward to bringing you the finals uh, coming up a little bit later on the, in this day of the Invictus Games. So, yeah, a lot of excitement with all of uh, most of these swimmers having been involved in other sports as we look at the program for you. So we're going to start off with the 100 metre freestyle heats in four categories before moving through to the 50 metres action. We're going to start it off with backstroke before moving into freestyle and then we will move into breaststroke before we have those heats as I just touched on for the four by 50 meters freestyle relays right at the end of this session. Now you might know, uh, you might see those codes on the graphics there, ISD, ISC, ISA, that is uh, the categorization categories. Uh, we will be concentrating on ISC to start with and uh, that is a functional profile of impairments to upper limbs that is above the level of the wrist 
that is preventing the ability to catch, perform arm cycles and gain propulsion with normal trunk, kick or lower limb impairments, resulting in restricted lead cycle propulsion, balance with ma maintained arm cycle. They can start in the water or on the blocks. So that is in the ISC category that we will be concentrating. And we've got two heats coming up in that category before moving to the ISD category, which we can explain to you a little bit later on. But uh, we have just a couple of heats in the 100 meters men's freestyle. We're going to have uh, some swimmers from various countries around the world, from South America, from North America, from Asia and Europe as well. So all in the category and all uh, in readiness for what should be some great swimming coming up a little bit later on today. Some of the uh, ISE categories I should tell you, which is the functional where competitors with psychological injuries or minor functional impairments that don't qualify them for a physical impairment class. That's ISE. They are they're, they're quite a, a popular category and in one category in particular we have seven heats to get through so there's a lot of swimmers that will be competing in the 50 meters freestyle in that category coming up later on in this session so there should be a great vibe in the stadium here today lots of support and it's uh, a real pleasure for me to be bringing you the commentary of the swimming heats over the next few hours we have our first Heat coming up in about three minutes' time with the men's 100 metres freestyle in the ISC category. Of course, swimming such a great therapeutical sport for a lot of these athletes. And uh, don't get the jarring impact, of course, by running or competing on a field. And uh, it's just a, a lovely therapeutic sport. Nothing like getting the, the feeling of jumping in the water and having that all wash around you as you try to recover from an injury. And I'm sure many of you listening to this broadcast will have enjoyed that at some stage during your life. really need to for the officials to be involved in events such as the Invictus Games here in Dusseldorf and I'm sure they'll get a real kick out, out of being part of the action today of course uh, swimming just the one day of action so it's a pretty full-on day for all the athletes that are involved at this year's games So great thrill for the officials as well uh, over the next a few hours. Going to be a great atmosphere in the stadium all the way through to finals coming up later. looking absolutely pristine for today's action. I'm sure we're going to get some really good performances across all the different categories today. Yeah, it's in this session we're going to have swimming in the, as I touched on, starting in the IS. C category. We'll also have action in the ISB, ISD, and ISE categories. A 
I'll touch on those uh, categories in more detail as we come to them for you. And uh, I must say, in having a look at all the swimmers that are going to be swimming today, including Ryan Kelly of Australia, there is uh, barely an athlete here who will be swimming today who hasn't already competed in another sport, like athletics or wheelchair rugby, indoor rowing. And many of them still have the cycling to come. Maybe they've got a sitting volleyball match coming up or a wheelchair basketball match coming up as well. Or maybe they're going to have a crack at archery. So it's really cool that the program is structured to enable as many athletes as possible to participate and have a try at all different sports. So we're going to start off with the men's 100 meter freestyle heats in the ISC category here at the Invictus Games 2023 on the swimming program. And we were going to have uh, two heats in this. See who makes it through to the final a little bit later on. So here we go, the first of the, the heats for the men's 100 meter freestyle in the ISC category. And start uh, the swimmers in the water on or on the blocks. And uh, this category, basically for impairments to upper limbs above the level of the wrist. So here are the four swimmers in the first heat. Euclides Feria Avia of Colombia, Alberto Almeida Arcanigas of Colombia, and we have the American Isaiah Staley, and the UK's Chris Anslow will be swimming in lane six. Great excitement. I'm sure the adrenaline is really at its height now for all of these four swimmers as they kick off the swimming program for 2023. Good start there for Isaiah Staley in lane five. Lieutenant in the US Special Operations Command. Kicking on nicely now in lane four as touches the wall first. It is Almeida Arcaniguez of Colombia, and he's already built up a good lead. He's swimming also in four other events today. And he's a bronze medalist in the 1500 meters in the IT1 category. And the track a little bit earlier on. So he's got a good healthy lead with Staley coming down in second place at the moment. He's in the white cap, but a good uh, lead over Staley as the Colombian. Third at the moment, Fida Avia of Colombia. Chris Anslow is doing a great job in completing his 100 meter freestyle race. So here comes Almeida. Arcaniguez of Colombia, and he is uh, going to swim a very good 100 meters here, and there he 
He's coming home in 116.91. A good swim for him. Healthy win for him. Isaiah Staley, gold medalist in the wheelchair rugby earlier on in these games. He's going to come home in second place in this heat. Nice swim from him. And here comes Euclides Feria Avia of Colombia in third. He won three medals on the track in the track and field a little bit earlier on in these games, including a gold in the IT5 100 metres. And Chris Anslow here. Well, what a story he is. He's 50 years old from Cheshire. This is his second Invictus Games. He competed at The Hague last year. He was injured in Afghanistan in an IED blast that lost, that killed three of his mates. And uh, basically, he's a self-confessed recluse four years ago, but has come back to really integrate into society really well. So, sure, he's enjoying himself. And he's going to be back out there a little bit later, too, in four other events today. And there's Anslo now finishing in fourth place. There is the winner. Archimedes of uh, Colombia. A very tidy swim for him in the first of the heats of the ISC 100 metres men's freestyle. She Staley made a pretty decent start, but in the end, the Colombian got a very nice tidy stroke kicked on nicely and pulled clear so he won in that time of one nine uh, one sixteen ninety one and just under 18 seconds faster than Staley who finished in second place but a really good swim there for the Colombian who wins the first heat in the men's 100 meters freestyle ISC category Confirming those times for you, 116.91, Staley 134.55, and Feria Avia 143.17, with Anslo coming home in fourth at 2.30.05. So... Second and uh, final heat now of the men's 100 meter freestyle in the ISC category. Five swimmers about to give it a crack in the pool. So in lane one, uh, lane uh, two rather, Roberto Como of Italy, Rigoberto. Zapata Ortiz of Colombia in lane three. Garrett Kuwata of the United States in four. Mauricio Alejandro Pena Trujillo of Colombia in lane five. And Lee Jeek of Korea is in lane six. So 100 metres, four laps of the 25-metre pool here at the Invictus Games. Great range of countries. Two Colombians in there again. Garrett Kuwata of the United States. A slight lead coming into the first lap. Just ahead of Pena Trujillo. A tight race. Also going well in lane two at the moment. Roberto Como. He's right at the top of your picture there. The Italian gold medalist in the athletics. IT3 1500 metres from earlier on in these games. Still lane five at the moment. It's in at three hero, just ahead of Kuwata. And Como only three seconds back in third place. So just over, or just under halfway through now. Kuwata in the black cap. He's just got his nose in front again. The chief master sergeant in the US Air Force, a veteran, swimming in two other events. In fact, three other events today. Another gold medalist in the wheelchair rugby earlier on in these games. Whoa, it's tight between these two, isn't it? Well, they've got to give it everything now on this last lap. And look at Como at the top, too. He is coming home strongly, the Italian. What a race we've got here. 
Good to see all three of these swimmers really duking it out. And Como's now half a body length in front and doing really well. So a lovely, fantastic finish. The last half of that race to Roberto Como, 137-12. He wins the heat ahead of Pena Trujillo. And Garrett Kubata of the United States is going to come home in third place. Good race, that one, though. Less than five seconds between the three of them. And here comes the Korean, Lee Chik. Great swim from him. He's also got the cycling coming up a little bit later on. And the last athlete still to finish is Zapata Ortiz of Colombia. He had a wonderful track and field campaign. He won three silvers in the IT3 100 meters, 400 meters, and the 1500 meters. Also had a crack at indoor rowing as well. And he still might feature in some sitting volleyball and table tennis too in these games. So busy man here this week here in Dusseldorf as this swimmer here, Zapata Ortiz. Great effort there from him as he finishes the race in 2.45.26. It's a great uh, effort from all five swimmers, and Como was very impressive as he came from third at the halfway stage to come home and win that race by 2.49 seconds. Pena Trujillo was in second and Kuwata in third. Good race, that one. And we thought initially it was just going to be Kuwata and Pena Trujillo who, would, uh, who were going to actually fight it out for the win in that race. But Homo just did the sneaky little swim, did he, on the inside lane there. And... Uh, kicked on nicely powerful finish to him great win there for the italian roberto como in the second heat of the men's 100 meter freestyle isc category so we're now moving to another category now staying with the same distance it's the isd category this is for upper limb impairments lower limb impairments and we have five swimmers in the first of two heats coming up. Shalom Zanzuri of Israel, Justin James of the United States, Cooper Blackwood of Australia, Juan Carlos Sierra Fernandez of Colombia, and Leszczyk Stepian of Poland. Those are the five swimmers in the ISD category. So this category covers a wide range of impairments such as below knee amputations, ankle joints, single hand amputations perhaps, spinal cord injuries as well. And straight away it's Cooper Blackwood and Shalom Zanzuri who are show showing out here in the first of these heats. Zanzuri also swimming in the 50 metres breaststroke and 50 metres freestyle a little later. Cooper Blackwood, he's from originally from Rockhampton in Queensland bronze medalist in the wheelchair rugby damaged his spinal cord diving into a pool in 2018 and had to walk a learn to walk again cooper blackwood but tell you what he's a good swimmer too he's only 0.3 of a second behind so again very close between these two tanzuri's got a slightly higher strike rate as cooper blackwood very efficient through the water So let's see what happens here as these two going home we're going well in third is the polish swimmer Schnepian at the moment he's closest to the camera here but it looks like blackwood has just got his nose in front there's not much in this race Schnepian doing a great job but blackwood just gets there Schnepian might have snuck home no he hasn't in second it is going to be zanzuri who retains second place but a great swim from Leszek Stepien come home in third place. Less than a second behind the winner. Good swim too by Justin James there, the American. The master sergeant in the US Air Force. Now take your breath and then clear the pool. 
but we know how Australia produced many champion swimmers over the years, haven't they? And Cooper Blackwood doing his country proud there by winning that first heat of the ISD men's 100 metres freestyle. One nineteen sixty was his time. And he won by point six seven of a second. Stepian just behind in third, and James coming home in fourth place. Heat number two now, the men's 100 metres in the ISD category. Five swimmers coming out to compete in this heat. Yeah, wonderful vibe here in the swimming stadium. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. So five swimmers in this race. Matt Tyndall of Canada. He's going to be at the top of your screen when the race starts in lane two. Nathan King from Australia. Richard Davies from the UK. Marius Eiffus of Romania. And the Israeli, in fact, the Colombian, rather, Uriel Francisco. Guta Bonza Jaime is uh, going to be in this race, too. The second and last heat of the men's 100 meter freestyle in the ISD category. Wow, straight away we've got a swimmer who is absolutely racing away with this one. Richard Davies, it is of the UK, the 35 year old RAF veteran, originally from Cardiff. He is making a great race of this one, gliding through technique outstanding. Richard Davies, healthy lead. He's gone through the halfway stage in 30.05 seconds. Typhus from Romania, four and a half seconds behind. But Davies swimming the best of the entire swimmers that we've seen so far today. He is racing away with this one. Davies lost his, or had a accident in Cyprus to his left foot finally had it amputated in 2021 after it caused him a lot of grief and that's a great swim 102 28 fantastic swim by Richard Davies from Norfolk here comes the swimmer home in second it is going to be Marius Typhus of Romania really good swim from him as well Matt Tyndall from Canada. Nathan King too out there as well. So here comes Nathan King to finish. The aircraft technician in the RAAF. Two tours of the Middle East and he's finished home in third place. Really good and a became apparent pretty much after the start that Richard Davies is going to completely dominate that heat. A brilliant stuff uh, from Richard Davies. 102.28 he stopped the clock at. Sadly, Matt Tyndall in lane two didn't finish the race, which was a real shame for him. But I'm sure we'll see him front again in the 50 metres freestyle a little bit later. So now we're in the, the heats now of the men's 100 meter freestyle. Four heats coming up in this category, the ISE category. Here is the field, seven swimmers in there. Manicki of Germany, Gerti of Germany, Palich of Germany, Dice of Germany, McGlinchey of Australia, Brzaka of the United States and Kelly of Australia.
The first heat of the ISE 100 metres men's freestyle is underway. And straight away, the Australian closest to the camera here, Ryan Kelly, the 40-year-old from Port Macquarie. He's raced out to a fantastic start. From a Navy member. He's a mine warfare clearance diving officer, so he's well used to being in the water. He is racing away with this one, Ryan Kelly. Looks like he could crack a minute too. David Geraghty going well in lane two. But it's Ryan Kelly making no race of this one. Served in the Middle East and the Solomons, his four kids. And he'll be doing his kids and family very proud as he races to the wall. Has he cracked the minute he has? Brilliant. Ryan Kelly, 59.88. Terrific swim from him. A terrific effort there, and Gennetti's done well at the top to come home. Uh, about 113. Ryan Kelly. Ryan Kelly. Very good swim from him. So Garrity's come home in second. McGlinchey has come home in third. That's Jamie McGlinchey, another Australian. And here comes Masal Palic finishing the race as well. So competed or competing in the wheelchair basketball ball all about Ryan Kelly 59.88 the first swimmer that we've seen crack the one minute barrier here at these Invictus Games today great swim there by the Australian As he locks in that time. A very smart time of 59.88. McGirrity and McGlinchey rounding out the top three. Heat number two of four coming up now of the men's 100 metres freestyle in the ISE category. ISE category, folks, is functional profile has competitors with psychological injuries or minor functional impairments that don't qualify them for a physical impairment class. More Australians coming up. There's three more of them in this heat. Bradley Mazzaferi, Carl Woodward and Justin Donnelly. You can see them in lanes one, two, and six, respectively. We've got Henrik Sørgren of Denmark, David Jarvis of the UK, Milan Andresen of Germany, Gil Alkobi of Israel, and right at the bottom, Brian Hotchkiss of the USA. So full field in this one. So underway in the second heat. And I tell you what, who made a great start was Brian Hotchkiss right at the bottom here. Showing out is Milan Andresen of Germany. He's in lane five, and Carl Woodward, who's at the top of the picture in lane two in the yellow cap, the Australian. So those two in particular, Carl Woodward at the top of your screen, and the German, Milan Andresen, are the two showing out, and Carl Woodward now kicking on nicely. The 42-year-old from Terrigal, beautiful little spot in New South Wales. We also see him in three other events coming up later today. A former competitive swimmer, before being discharged earlier this year out of the Air Force. And Carl Woodward doing a fantastic job, served in Africa, Asia. Woodward in lane two, setting the standard in this heat. And he's going to win pretty comfortably. Getting 
good support from the crowd too. There's Woodward locking in 107.53. Great swim from him. Andresen. 468 behind. Great swim from the German. And 112.21 was his time. And David Jarvis from the UK has come home in third. From Scotland he is. And he has finished in a time of 117.14. Australian coming home here, Justin Donnelly from Adelaide. Great swim from Donnelly, 47 years of age. And here's our last swimmer coming home. It's Hendrik Sertegren of Denmark. But great to see the full field finishing in heat number two of the men's 100 metres freestyle in the ISE category. Your winner, Carl Woodward of Australia. 107.53 the time, 4.68 seconds clear of Anderson. Jarvis home in third from the UK, 117.14. Remember this, in this session we have heats only all the way through this first few hours as all of the swimmers try and qualify for the finals coming up later today in this session. Good swim there, wasn't it, from our winner of that heat, Carl Woodward. The Aussies showing out nicely, aren't they? With uh, both winners coming from Australia in the first two heats. Well, let's see if they can make it three on the trot in third heat because we have another one in there, Daniel King from Sydney. He's in lane four. Royals Michelson from Denmark, Bob Grantham from the from the UK, Henrik Martin Andersen from Denmark, so two Danish swimmers, Jurgen Kazenbach from Germany, James Rogers from the UK, Paul Charlie Charles from the UK, and Soren Hall from New Zealand is in this race as well. So heat number three now of the men's 100 metres freestyle in the ISC category. Good start too for Paul Charlie Charles in lane seven. Royal Marines veteran and he's made a cracking start. Wow. He has hit the wall in under 15 seconds. 45 years of age from Devon. Served 21 years in the Marines before being discharged in January this year after being hit by a car cycling home from the barracks. Serious brain injury, multiple fractures, terrible accident. Finally led to his discharge in 2023. Check the timeout for Charles. Wow, the UK swimmer's going well. Bob Grantham in second at the moment and Soren Hall from New Zealand is currently third. But Charles, what a swimming style he has he's got it down pat hasn't he as grantham continues in second place but it's all about paul charles who's going to comfortably win this race 101 07 that's a smart time good swim by look like daniel king who's come home in second and grantham He's going to lock in third, so a very good finish there for Daniel King, the Australian. New Zealand Soren Hall just finishing home. Looks like he's come home in fourth place. Good battle for fifth between Anderson and Cousin Bart from Germany. But Denmark's Anderson's going to get home. Good swim from him. Great swim by Paul Charles, who absolutely dominated. Now here's Thrills Michelson. Crowd urging him, supporting him, trying to bring him home, and he's determined to finish, no doubt about it.
great support by not only the fans but some swimmers as well. That's awesome. Great effort there from Thrills Michelson to get to the end. So they're all the times for you. But Charles winning that race just over a minute, 101.07. I think the final in this. Men's 100 metres freestyle ISE category is shaping up very nicely later on today. Gonna have uh, some really good swimmers going at it. It was the Brits showing out early, wasn't it? Very good swim by the UK swimmers, Grantham and by Charles. The spirit of the Evictus Games is alive and well. So here comes the last of the four heats. So yeah, just the one swimmer going under a minute so far. Ryan Kelly, that was in the first heat. Let's see if any of these swimmers can get there. Terry Jones from the UK, Donald Calero of the USA. Yevhenny Kryonok of Ukraine, Kenton Dill of Canada, Ryan Arthur of the United States, Jeffrey Peters of the United States, William Cruz of the United States, and Bo, Bob Beaudry of Canada. Looks like uh, some of those swimmers unfortunately haven't got to the start line, which is a shame. But Terry Jones up at the top there has made a good start. The 34 year old from Flinchter. He's going to lead after the first of the laps. In fact, that could be Donald Calero. In fact, it is. I think Donald Calero, who's leading the way, the American at the moment, the hospital courtsman, second class in the US Navy. Whoops. Made a little bit of a stumble there. He didn't. Did he touch the wall? I hope he touched the wall. That would be a tra tragedy if he didn't get a good touch. So we'll hopefully sort that out for you in just a moment. The Calero still doing a good turn, but it's going to be Kryonok of Ukraine who's going great here. He's using this Invictus Games to rehabilitate after some fairly serious issues in his career. But he's going to win the race at 109.80. Calero, well, that was a gallant race from him. 3.29 seconds behind. He's going to come home in second. Ryan Arthur's come home in third place. Jeffrey Peters still to finish too. So Ryan Arthur, who we saw compete in seven events in the athletics. And now here comes Jeffrey Peters. He won two silvers and a bronze in the athletics. And here he is in the pool, completing the 100 meters, Jeffrey Peters. going to be Krayonok who won that race 109.80 113.09 3.29 seconds behind Donald Calero with Arthur coming home third in 128 flat Well, we'll see the best of the best, of course, in those in that category come back later in the day to compete for the medals. And all about the Ukrainian there as uh, the fans get into it, which is great. So we now move to the first of the women's action now. And we're going to get uh, three heats in the women's 100 metres freestyle. This is the last of the 100 metre freestyle categories in ISE. So we've got 
It's a touched on three heats coming up in just a moment. Hope you're enjoying your coverage. It's certainly fast and furious in the pool, isn't it? Here are the five swimmers competing. In lane number two, Alana Ball of the USA, Amanda Sands of the UK, Julia Eirich of Germany, Sydney Rose of the United States, and Victoria Kamir of the USA. see how the women go it's going to be great three heats coming up and a lot of these swimmers are going to be very busy today in other heats and other categories and dis distances so we've got the three swimmers going for it in fact two haven't made the starting line unfortunately Alana Borland is making a good start in lane number two and she's got a good lead already the 54 year old army veteran she's a, she was a GP served 14 years three tours of Afghanistan also served in Brunei and Nepal and she contracted lung cancer in 2018 but is fighting on big time and she is doing fantastic is Alana Ball got a really nice lead healthy lead over the two other swimmers Eirik and Sydney Rose and Ball's going to cruise to a comfortable victory here. Looks like Eirik is back in second place. Sydney Rose is doing well as well. But it's all about Alana Ball. It's going to go under 120. So a good swim by her. Brilliant effort from her. Julia Eirich has come home in second, and Sydney Rose is home in third place. Brilliant swim by Alana Ball. Very good swimmer, Lieutenant Commander in the US Special Services. And she looks like she is a crack in the pool. Very good in power lifting as well. And we saw her finish in seventh place earlier on in the power lifting. Very good swim from her. Let's go to our second of the heats now. Here are the five and six swimmers who will be lining up in this one. Jessica. Daiko of Canada, Suzanne Brown of the USA, Erin Brigden of Australia, Angela Yusin of the USA, Yalan Barr of Israel, Verity Sanchez of Australia. Away in the second heat of the women's 100 meter freestyle in the ISC category. All these swimmers trying to get into the final a little bit later on today. And the Australian Brigden, who's already won three gold medals at this Invictus Games already two in indoor rowing, one in powerlifting. And look at her swimming stroke very efficient. She is going great here. So 
Brickton in front with Yusin, who's also won two golds here in athletics, discus and the shot put. She's in second place. About two and a half seconds behind Brickton. She's going well, isn't she, the Aussie? Yusin doing well to hold second. The other three swimmers battling away nicely at the moment. But they're no match for Brigden. He's going to come home nicely to win this race. Fastest time so far, 110.79. Three heats, remember. Good race coming home for second. Looks like Verity Sanchez is going to get there. The other Australian in the race. Just pipping Angela Yusin. So fast finishing Verity Sanchez there. Fantastic and a really good race there for fourth. And let's see if Zimbar or Daiko that got there. Very close call between those two. We'll have to wait for the official times to pop up. In fact, here's Daiko finish. It was Brown and Umbar who actually fought that out and Inbar just got there by 0.16 of a second. So, Erin Brickton. Wow, what a fantastic all-round sports person she seems to be. She looks like she's going to be a real contender in the pool. Here in the Invictus Games, just like she was on the indoor rowing machine and also in powerlifting. Brickton showed out straight away, didn't she? 29 years of age. Joined in 2014, the Australian Army, medically discharged earlier this year. She's got a ligament tear, degeneration in her left wrist. Mental health issues as well, and uh, well, she seems to be really dealing with everything really nicely here at these Invictus Games. So congratulations to her, fine athlete she is. Third heat coming up now of the men's, or sorry, the women's 100 metres freestyle. It's an action-packed session, this one, with uh, a lot of categories still to come. This is the last of the 100 metre freestyle races. We're dropping back to 50 metres for the rest of the program coming up after this race. So here are the six swimmers for our final heat. Erica Moore of Canada, Nicole Favuza of the United States, Carly James of the US, Jenny Hartley of the UK, Rebecca York of the UK, and Denise Medina of the United States. These athletes have already won golds. Jenny Hartley in athletics. Nicole Favuza also in athletics. She won two on the track. So we'll see how they translate their, their great skills to the water. Looks like our Rebecca York has made the best start. The 30-year-old, eight-year-old from Somerset. He's got a, a slight lead at the moment with... Okay, Carly James in second at the moment. So York takes a good, comfortable lead at the halfway stage. Just ahead of James and Hartley. Hartley right behind James in third place. Rebecca York, she's a fantastic musician as well. Performed at Prince William's wedding and the London Olympic Games. 
competing in the Invictus Games as she continues to deal with mental health issues after a, a debilitating, debilitating uh, hip injury. But Rebecca York doing a great uh, job here. Swimming, you'd think, would be an ideal sport for her, and she is absolutely loving it at the moment in the pool. It's a great swim there from your 122.01. That is going to be competitive. And James has done brilliantly to kick clear of Jenny Hartley. So Carly James has come home in second, the American. And Jenny Hartley is going to get third place. Good swim from all three of these athletes and here comes Nicole Favuza as well very good all-round athlete and Erica Moore still out there for Canada also swimming well Denise Medina of the USA getting good support is Denise Medina That's the motto, isn't it? Just keep swimming. Get to the end. Great job by those last two to finish. Erica Moore. Wonderful. energy sapping stuff isn't it so here are the confirmed results in the third and final heat of the women's 100 meters freestyle in the IC category York takes the win ahead of James and Hartley with Favuza Medina and Moore completing the race Good action in that category. There's a very solid swim from the winner. York of the UK. Really good race from here. go to backstroke now as we get set for 50 meter action ISB category is what we're going to be swinging to next ISB category functional profile has each swimmer using having the use of arms and shoulders but impaired lower limbs function Able to perform effective catch and arm cycle, gaining propulsion with leg drag or lower limb amputations. May have trunk impairment as well. So we've got two heats coming up in the men's 50 meter backstroke in the ISB. And here is our first group of competitors. Nazar Vuznyuk of Ukraine. He starts. He didn't start on the 100 meters freestyle. Para Contreras of Colombia, Pedraza Osorio of Colombia, and Vladimir Hira of Ukraine is going to be competing as well. Two laps, two lengths of the pool in this from here on in for all the other events coming up in this session. And we do have still a number of categories to come, including this one. There's still another 12 to go. In fact, 13 as I uh, go through my list here. But I hope you're enjoying the coverage. It's certainly great and inspiring swimming. 
in competition for all of these athletes. So looks like we do have uh, just the two competing. In fact, uh, here comes Vladimir Hera. Two-time silver medalist in the IF7 shot put and discus in the athletics. Amazing to see so many of the Ukrainians here competing. Getting some pretty horrific and harrowing stories, aren't we, from some of these Ukrainians that are competing. So two Ukrainians in the race, Vozniuk and Hera. And Para Contreras of Colombia is also competing as well. Vosniuk is uh, the swimmer, swimmer doing well at the moment. Won a gold in the indoor rowing IR2 category. Foreman and Endurance came second, second in the women at Sprint 2. So he's going well. Is going well. Of course, uh, most of these Ukrainians have had horrific times back in their home country. And a chance for them to actually use the Invictus Games to rehabilitate. So here's Nazur Vuznyek, who wins that in 45.98. Para Contreras going well as well. He already has a medal at these games too. And the one minute sprint in the indoor rowing, the IR2 category. Here he is here in the blue cap. We're going to see him in cycling too. He also competed in powerlifting. Here he goes. He's going to come home in second. A good finish coming up here for Vladimir Hera. is finishing great swim from him awesome Lazar Vosniuk locking in there 45 98 just the two heats to come in this ISB category in the men's 50 back Definitely was the uh, more accomplished of the three swimmers. But, you know, it's not all about winning, of course, at the Invictus Games. It's about competing and finishing. And, and swimming backstroke is not easy, even if you're able-bodied. So all three swimmers doing fantastic job in that first heat. So second heat coming up shortly in just a moment. In fact, of the ISB men's 50 metres backstroke. isn't it of uh, just enjoying the the action oh they've seen themselves on the screen give us a wave there we go great to see the family here as well the Invictus Games is for everyone all ages I'm sure just turn to your left and find a camera wave at us other way come on down point for us to the left 
just a slight delay before the second heat of the men's 50 meters backstroke. what other events are coming up perhaps uh, you'll know someone in one of these events so we're currently enjoying the men's 50 meters backstroke in the isb category we're going to stay with the 50 back for a while there's another three categories coming up following this next deep we're going to move to the isd category and then we're into the ise categories for both the men's and the women's we then move to four 50 meter freestyle in fact five 50 meter freestyle categories ending with three 50 meter breaststroke categories and then the mixed four by 50 meter freestyle heats okay, good action to come here as the Invictus Games continues here in Dusseldorf hope you're enjoying not only the swimming today but all the sports certainly been some great action and Great stories. Second heat here, Dmitro Polovian of Ukraine, Christian Vega of the USA, Camillo Andres Castellanos Sanchez of Colombia, Eduard Jesus Guerrero Rios of Colombia, and Scott Caroon of the USA. And uh, Polovian, what an amazing story he is. The Ukrainian, wounded last year in the war, captured and then released in an exchange and uh, here he is barely a year later swimming at the Invictus Games which is remarkable not only swimming but he'll be in a archery as well and competing in the wheelchair basketball he's going to be right at the top there in lane two Scott Caroon just getting ready now. The Master Sergeant of the US Air Force. Second and final heat of the men's 50 metres backstroke in the ISB category. Five swimmers. And making a good start, Christian Vega of the USA in lane three, retired senior airman in the US Air Force. But now starting to show it in the blue cap is the Colombian Castellanos Sanchez. He's got a busy program coming up. Also competing in three other events as well. So he's going to turn first. It's a pretty tight race, though. But the Colombian's still in front at the moment. He's stretching out nicely now, the Colombian. Polovian in lane two. Looks like he could be holding second or third at the moment. He could be humming and coming home in second, but there's a good win for the Colombian. Really good race from Castellano Sanchez. 56-26. Lovian's going to come home in second, the Ukrainian. Good swim. 18 seconds behind. Looks like uh, the other Colombian, Guerrero Rios, 
He's come home in 30 years. Christian Vega and Scott Caroon, the Americans, are going to come home in fourth and fifth. Oh, good to see the smiles on the face of the two Colombians. They love it, don't they? Scott Caroon doing really well here. Already won two bronze medals at these games, and indoor rowing has Karun. And the IR4 four minute endurance and one minute sprint. So great effort from Karun in the pool, and there he is finishing. Great job, mate. Well done. You made it. Here is our winner, Castellanos Sanchez. 56 26, breaking the minute. Colombian coming home in second with. Guerrero Rios coming home third in the second and final heat of the ISB 50 metres backstroke. Good solid race that one, but uh, in the end, Castiano Sanchez kicking on nicely. Strong finish to the race, winning comfortably. And what about that man, Polovian? So 114 23 will get him into the final. Swimming program well and truly enthralling so far. Pause and proceedings with the next category getting underway in a few minutes' time. Four minutes, in fact. The men's 50-meter backstroke in the ISD category. We'll have that action for you in just a moment. Stay with us.
Yeah, swimming continues here. All heats as we move through this very congested session. We now move to men's 50 meter backstroke. We'll stay with men's 50 meter backstroke into the ISD category. Five swimmers about to take the pool in the first of the two heats in this category. Vishek Stepnian of Poland, Marius Typhus of Romania, Nathan King of Australia, Richard Davies, who was brilliant in the 100 metres freestyle, and Justin James of the USA. So all five of these swimmers in this pool, or in the uh, in this heat rather, having already swum in the 100 metres freestyle, Davies was absolutely outstanding. Let's see if he is a couple as accomplished in the backstroke uh, discipline as he was in the freestyle. ISD, remember, upper limb impairments, lower limb impairments can uh, be amputations, spinal cord injuries, so some pretty serious injuries that uh, all that swim in this category have. Stepien, too, was very good on the 100 metres freestyle. We'll see how good he is in backstroke as well. He's going to be at the top of your picture in lane two. Davies, second to bottom in the black cap in lane five. The only one without a cap is Nathan King from Australia. He's in lane four. And straight away, Davies gets out to a terrific start. He looks like he's a fine swimmer. And there he goes, bouncing beautifully on top of the water. Very efficient turn as well. And he looks, again, in excellent form. Very even battle going on for the rest in this category, but it's all about Richard Davies again from Norfolk. Veteran RAF. And he is absolutely fantastic. 34.78. That sets the standard, Richard Davies. Another excellent swim from him. Looks like Stepien might get home in second here. In lane two, he has just ahead of Paifas of Romania. That's Nathan King finishing in fourth. And coming home is the veteran US Air Force Master Sergeant Justin James. But, uh, well, fantastic swim right there for Richard Davies. 34.78. Gets the job done very nicely. With Stepien, another good swim from the pole. Come home in second. And Typhus from Romania gets third. Straight away, Davies made a terrific start. He's got the technique right down pat. Gave him a, a good lead very early into the race. And he kicked on. Swim coming there from Typhus. He's shown out pretty well in the two swims that he's had so far. So he's going well. The Romanian who finished in third place. So let's just confirm those results. Davies first, Steppi in second, and Typhus in third. Second and final heat now, the men's 50 metres backstroke, ISD category. Five swimmers, two from Colombia, two from the UK and Cooper Blackwood there from Australia. So Sierra Fernandez, Guata Bonza Jaime of Colombia, Moncrief and Hadi of the UK. So Blackwood, the Australian, he'll be closest to the camera. Two Colombians will be at the top of your picture, and then Moncrief and Huddy in lanes four and five in the black caps. Second heat underway in the men's 50 metres backstroke in the ISD. Very even start. Maybe the two Colombians just getting their noses in front early. But now Cooper Blackwood from, the, from Australia already showing out nicely. 25-year-old from Sydney, originally from Rockhampton and Queensland, and he's done well. Turn first, and built himself a, a pretty decent lead over the 
Colombian at the top of the picture there, Juan Carlos Sierra Fernandez. It's all about Blackwood. As he comes down to win it, just over 41 seconds. Sierra Fernandez and his compatriot come home in second and third. Wafa Bonzo Jaime. Moncrief just behind in fourth, and it's going to be Nathan Huddy, the 43-year-old from Wales, who's going to come home in fifth place. Great job from Huddy. Injured when his vehicle hit a landmine in Iraq back in 2003. Nathan Huddy. But Klupa Blackwood it is, the Australian. Again, the start all important and it was Blackwood who really did well to go on and win that race you can see he made a good start there and quickly built up a body length lead and then really ex extended it didn't he with his turn halfway through the race so Blackwood wins that second and final heat in the ISD category near the two Brits good to see Moncrief and Huddy congratulating each other as we see the times there people Blackwood did though win that heat with Sierra Fernandez coming home in second place move to the ISC category again if you're just joining the broadcast the ISC category is for competitors with psychological injuries or minor functional impairments that don't quite qualify them for a physical impairment class so three heats in this category coming up range of countries who are going to be represented in these next three heats about uh, let's have a look here six we've got about uh, 20 swimmers lining up in this category which will start any moment So here are the swimmers in the first heat of the men's 50 meter backstroke ISE category. Frederick van Lieperveld. It's going to be in lane two at the top from Belgium. Then in lane four, Ryan Kelly from Australia. Fantastic in the 100 free. Donald Calero from lane six is uh, swimming for the USA. And Bob Beaudry of Canada in seven. So Ryan Kelly, let's see how he goes again. We saw Richard Davies going brilliantly from the UK short time ago in another category. And Ryan Kelly, he's got it going on, hasn't he? The 40-year-old from Port Macquarie. Served from the Middle East and the Solomon Islands. Has four kids, spinal injury in 2019. He's a mine clearance, a mine warfare clearance diving officer. And Kelly is really starting to heat up 
and wins comfortably 33 22 very smart time for the australian good race the second coming up here looks like calero yes donald calero's got it just ahead of the belgian van lippervel so calero hospital courtsman foreman rather second class and here's bob beaudry from canada retired air force medic great swim from him to compete in wheelchair rugby and he'll also have a go at archery too but ryan kelly too good for them again 33 22 ahead of calero 42 13 who finished just ahead of belgium's frederick van lippervel So some swimmers featuring strongly already across different disciplines now, aren't they? With Ryan Kelly, Richard Davies starting to show out really well. Ryan Kelly, a fine swimmer indeed. It's kind of busy end of the game for him. He's got archery and sitting volleyball to come as well. Great job by Kelly to win that heat. Two more heats to come in this category, and then we're going to move to the women's category, the IEC category. And what will be our last backstroke 50 meters contest in the heats. Come the swimmers for the second of the heats. Paul Charles is going to be one to watch. Brilliant in that uh, 100 metres freestyle earlier in this category. Certainly set the standard. Carl Woodward as well was a winner in the heat in the 100 metres earlier on from Australia. So we'll see how those two back up. David Jarvis from the UK in there. Amatai Arnon of Israel, Jamie McGlinchey, another Australian. Foyles Michelson from Denmark and Kenton Dill from Canada. It's going to be in lane seven. Charles at the top in lane one. Great support for all the swimmers. So it looks like Carl Woodward's not uh, backing up from that 100 metres earlier. So Jamie McGlinchey, the sole Australian in lane four. I wonder about Paul Charles at the top of the picture. But McGlinchey's made a good start, the Australian, the 30 year old from Coogee, or just down the coast from Coogee, Matraville in Sydney. But Arnon in Israel is the man setting the standard at the moment. First swimmer in the pool for him today. He's coming up uh, also competing in the 50 freestyle. But Charles starting to look ominous in lane one now, right at the top of your picture. As he comes back at the Israeli swimmer. Well, great race coming up here, stroke for stroke. And it's Arnon who's got it by 0.23 of a second. Good swim by the Israeli, just beating Charlie Charles and Kenton Dill. Good swim from the Canadian too. That was a smart time from him. 39.47, he's come home in third place. Very, very tight race as we see Michelson coming home in sixth. Good swim from him. There is our winner of that heat, Amitai Arnon of Israel. Fast finishing Paul Charles, just couldn't quite catch him. Paul Charlie Charles, 0.23 of a second behind, and Kenton Dill also breaking 40 seconds for the 50 back.
Well, he just got there, didn't he? By the smallest of margins, aren't on, but it was a tight one. Look comfortable, really, but then Charles. Well, maybe a mixture of Charles really starting to come home with a wet sail, and maybe Armon was just tightening up just a fraction. Charles actually looked like he was in front there, maybe with just a couple of metres to go, wasn't he? But Arnon just found something deep within himself to just uh, come home and win the race. So good one, that one. Heat number two. come of the ISE 50 backstroke heats in men's competition so women's 50 meter women's 50 meter backstroke ISE category continues with one final heat Here are the swimmers, Robert Pierce of New Zealand, Ryan Arthur of the USA, William Pazaka of the USA, Robin End of Germany, Daniel King of Australia, Jeffrey Peters, USA, Bradley Mazaferi of Australia. Doesn't look like all the swimmers are, are uh, lining up. It's like maybe just five of the seven that were listed to start this heat are lining up. So Arthur is going to be at the top in lane two. Robin End in lane four. And Jeffrey Peters is going to be closest to the camera, the American in lane six. It's like a lane five as Daniel King. He's made the best of the starts. Can he hold it, though, the Australian? Chaka, it is, in lane three. And Daniel King from Australia in lane five. Those two look like they've got the lead at the moment. King is really trying to give it absolutely everything. Came fourth in his powerlifting competition earlier. In the IP9 category, and he's got a good lead now over Perchaka of the USA. So here comes Daniel King down to the finish. 42.05. Good time for Daniel King. And there's Perchaka finishing in second. And it looks like Ryan Arthur is going to sneak home in third place. Good on him, Ryan Arthur. First lieutenant in the army. But all about Daniel King, the Aussie, getting home ammunition supplier, hometown of Sydney in New South Wales. Well, Daniel King gets the job done. He actually joined the army at the same time as his son back in 2010. He was a late starter in the military, but he gets the race uh, in this backstroke. 42.05, William Pachaka of the USA finishing second with the fellow American, Ryan Arthur in third in that heat. Well, we now move to women's 50 meter backstroke action. We have, again, the same category as the men just a moment ago, the ISE category. And if you've uh, just joined the broadcast, let me repeat what this category is for you again. 
It is competitors with psychological injuries or minor functional impairments that do not qualify them for a physical impairment class. So we have three heats coming up in the women's 50 metres backstroke. And here is the lineup for the first of the three heats. Erica Moore from Canada, Verity Sanchez of USA, Lana Taylor of Canada, Alana Ball, who was very impressive in the freestyle. She's in lane five. Cody Morton from the UK in six. And Angela Eusen, who won two gold medals in track and field. She is in lane seven. the lineup for the backstroke let's see how these women get on and uh, we had some terrific action earlier on in the 100 meters freestyle and I'm sure we're going to get some great action right now in the backstroke So it's Erica Moore right at the top from Canada. Sanchez in Australia at lane three. Taylor, Ball, Morton, Lucent. Canada, USA, UK, USA, respectively. And Alana Ball is going well in lane five again. And she looks a very fine all round swimmer, having really arguably been the most impressive of the swimmers in the 100 meters freestyle as well and she's got a fantastic technique as a backstroker and she's going to win comfortably fantastic swim for alana ball good swim too from Houston in lane seven and verity sanchez from australia comes home in third place but it's all about alana ball again who looks in imposing form. Houston also looking great now. We have a look at Cody Morton here, finishing in sixth. Or in uh, fifth place, perhaps, just ahead of Erica Moore. So Cody Morton, the 28 role from Devon, works in Royal Navy Recovery Centre supporting the wounded. What an admirable job that is. And Moore coming home in sixth place completing the heat in fine form as well but alana ball the lieutenant commander in the united states special operations command she wins that race over Yusin and sanchez coming home in third place in that heat for australia to see Sanchez competing well. 45-year-old from Adelaide. And we'll look forward to seeing her again. There's many other swimmers too. In the breaststroke and the 50 freestyle coming up. A lot of these swimmers swimming in all four categories in this session. But Alana Ball, her seventh in her powerlifting competition as well. swim for Alana Ball. He's going to touch some stop, take some stopping. In the pool, it seems, in this Invictus Games. Time 46. She finished uh, first in that heat, 3.26 seconds ahead of Angela Eusen, her compatriot. Sanchez coming home in third as a touched on. 45.30 was her time.
Now, second heat now of the 50 backstroke for the women in the IC category. Kelly McVitie of the UK. Carly James of the USA. Erin Brigden from Australia. Victoria Khmer of the USA. Stacey Adam of New Zealand. And Natalie Shaf Yuan of Canada. It's the lineup in this race. Brigden. Well, she's a star of these games. Looked fantastic in the 100 metres freestyle, winning her heat very comfortably. Already won three golds in two different sports already. Brigden, powerlifting and indoor rowing. She's going to be in lane four in the yellow cap. The Australian. First time in the pool today for Adam of New Zealand and Shafe Yuan of Canada. Away go the swimmers. Let's see who's made the best start. Well, it's Kelly McVitie of the UK, the 41-year-old RA5 veteran. But look at the stroke power there of Brigden. She has hauled her in in double quick time. Turns well as well, the Australian. And is all of a sudden two body lengths clear. Wow. Don't the best swimmers make it look so easy? Just looks like a walk in the park for the best, doesn't it? Britain's going to win comfortably. Just over 40 seconds, 40.26. Kelly McVitie of the UK is second. In fact, it's Carly James who's come home in second. Nice swim from her. And it's Shafe Yuan from Canada who comes home in third place. And Kelly McVitie, unfortunately, not starting in the end. But let's have a look at Stacey Adam from New Zealand here, X Air Force. Got a silver in the discus in the IF4 Masters category in track and field she comes home in fifth place so got a silver and in indoor rowing too did stacy adam great effort from her to win two medals so far at these invictus games but brigden wow how good is she fantastic all-round athlete she wins over carly james the air force staff sergeant with the canadian shafe yuan coming home in third place swim from Carly James hasn't medaled yet at these games got very close but Brigden how good is she she's from Brisbane hometown of Shell Harbour in New South Wales just 29 years of age and uh, great swim from her so one more heat to come in the women's 50 meters backstroke
Third and final heat, heat now in the women's 50 metres backstroke in the ISE category. All of these swimmers trying to get through to the finals coming up later today. And the one and only day of swimming action at these Invictus Games. Lorraine Correa of Israel down in lane one. Sydney Rose of the USA. Den Denise Medina of the USA. Suzanne Brown of the USA. And our last three swimmers are Amanda Sands of the UK, Nicole Favuza of the USA, and Rebecca York, who was great in the 100 metres freestyle. She's in lane seven. And a complete field, ready to go now. Well, York a bit slow to get going there for the UK in that bottom lane. She's a fine swimmer, and look at her. She's recovered beautifully. Imagine if she'd fasted, started fast. She would be probably even more clear than she is now. Rebecca York, the 38-year-old from Somerset. That's the... UK swimmer got a good lead over Suzanne Brown. It is in lane four at the moment. The US Coast Guard re retired captain. But Rebecca York, fantastic musician she is. War Marines veteran. She powers home to win that race, 46-33. Here comes Brown to come home in second. And it's going to be Fabuza who gets third from the United States. Two-time winner on the track earlier on at these games so great swim from all three and again york showing out good swims there from three out of it and amanda sands coming home the 54 year old from rutland in the uk so rebecca york Wow, she dominating the races again. She looks like she is going to be one of the stars of the pool in 2023. She wins by a comfortable margin over Suzanne Brown with Nicole Favuza coming home in third place. So here's the form of Rebecca York again. Well, we're going to see her competing in the breaststroke next. 50 metres breaststroke. We know how good she was in the freestyle on the 100 metres. I'm sure she's going to be a powerhouse in the 50 metres freestyle as well. She looks a fine all-round swimmer. She looks to perform at her best here in the pool today. Well, that concludes the action in the 50 metres backstroke for women in the ISE category. We're now moving to freestyle competition again, but we're back at the 50 metre distance. And we're going to have five categories coming up over the next wee while for you to enjoy. So if you know any of these swimmers, I'm sure you'll be wish wishing them luck as we move to the ISB category to begin with for men. Here's the lineup for the first of two heats. First heat's going to feature Jacob Kashoni of Israel, Alexander Butko of Ukraine, Para Contreras of Colombia, Guerrero Rios of Colombia, Hera of Ukraine, and Pedraza Osorio of Colombia. But 
uh, the spirit of all the swimmers so far has been superb, hasn't it? And uh, well, we've got a lot more of swimming to enjoy today. So let's just confirm those swimmers. I think I just mentioned the swimmers in the next heat coming up just a moment ago. So we should clarify all of these swimmers here again. Nazar Vosniuk of Ukraine. Armin Vichak of Germany. Christian Vega of the USA. Scott Karun of the USA. Camilo Andres Castellano Sanchez of Colombia. And Aluda Sitrudza of Georgia. That's in fact the lineup for this heat. Apologies about that. But we get there eventually here in the ISB category. So ISB category. These are athletes with big physical impairments. And making a good start is Christian Vega in lane four, the American. But coming through nicely, here's the Colombian. Castiano Sanchez in lane six. He's got a fine technique. And he is really trained well. You can see he's given everything to this heat. This guy is a star at these Invictus games. He's already won three golds in IT4 track competition as well. And he's a fantastic swimmer as well three goals and a silver he won on the track and he looks like he's on track to win more as Armin Vichar delights the home fans here in Dusseldorf finishing second in this heat and it's Scott Caroon of the, of the United States who's going to be third and how about Camillo Andres Castellano Sanchez Now the crowd will bring this man home, I'm sure. Aluda Seturudza. This is his only swimming event at these games. Finished fourth in his indoor rowing category earlier on at these Invictus games. So let's bring Seturudza home in his only swimming event from Georgia. so heartening isn't it brilliant stuff everyone on their feet bringing the Georgian home epitomizes the motto just keep swimming well, how about Camille Andres Castellano Sanchez that was brilliant from him good win for him in the first heat 6.82 seconds ahead of Armin Vichak of Germany with Scott Caroon coming home in third. You see the Colombian has just taken to competition here in the Invictus game so, so well. I repeat, he won three golds in the track in the 100, the 200 and the 400 in the IT4 category. He came second in the 1500. He is in the swimming pool, absolutely nailing it as well.
Well, the swimming continues. It's been great. I uh, hope you've been enjoying it so far. All the fans in here have been soaking it all up for sure. Yes, we're not too far away from heat number two in the men's 50 metres freestyle on the ISB category. Stay with us. That race coming up shortly. So out come the swimmers for the second heat in the men's 50 metres freestyle. And here are the six competitors. Jacob Gashoni of Israel. Alexander Butko of Ukraine. The three strong Colombians again. Nida Israel para Contreras. Eduard Jesus Guerrero Rios. And then Vladimir Hera of Ukraine is in there again. Francisco Yanaro. Petraza Osirio of Colombia to round out the field. Well, we'll see if the Colombian challenge will be as strong in this heat as it was in the last one. What a brilliant win! For Camillo Andres Castiano Sanchez. I'm sure, they will be keen as to 
really perform at their best. And unfortunately, Vladimir Hedda from Ukraine is not starting. But who is starting particularly well in lane three is Ana Contreras of Colombia. Got a silver in the one minute sprint in the IR2 category in indoor rowing. And he's trying to get a second me medal by winning this heat and qualifying for the final in this 50 meters free. So it's he, Ana Contreras, who leads at the moment lead as he it's about half a length to swim Guerrero Rios his compatriot is hunting him down but it's going to be Para Contreras who wins that Buklo's got it Buklo well 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 and there is second Guerrero Rios Gershoni is coming home next now Para Contreras, so wow, well, a Futko a disservice there. Really good win for him. 48-73. Well, Pedraza Osorio. He got a silver in indoor rowing as well in his category in the four-minute endurance. He's gonna finish right now. Good job. But it's Butko from Ukraine who wins that heat. Great swim by the Ukrainian and uh, great to see the Ukrainians competing strongly. Just uh, they are competing with such a great spirit here at these games. So a good win there for Alexander Butko of Ukraine. And by seven point Dickens. And it was Gashoni who came home in third for Israel. men's 50 meter freestyle heats are continuing we've got uh, three more categories to come and then we will be into women's heats so we've got the isc category coming next in the isd category and then the ise category with us uh, the action coming resuming in just a moment
Well, thank you for staying with us here at the swimming at the Invictus Games. We are coming up to ISC category 50 meters freestyle heats in men's competition next. Two heats coming up in this category. And here is the lineup for the first of the two heats. Mauricio Alejandro Penotrejillo of Colombia. Thierry Dutreux of Belgium. Rigoberto Zapata Ortiz of Colombia. Euclides Ferreira, or Ferreira, Avia rather, of Colombia. And Chris Anslow of the UK. USC category functional profiler has impairments to upper limbs or limb above the level of the wrist which prevents ability to catch perform arm cycles and gain propulsion with normal trunk or kick or lower limb impairments resulting in restricted leg cycles now the swimmers can start in the water or on the blocks So underway in this heat in the ISC men's 50 meters freestyle. So once again on the inside, Pena Trejillo doing particularly well. Right next to him, Dutre of Belgium. Those are the two swimmers at the moment who are showing out in these ISC Heats. That's a good win for the Ukrainian in lane seven. Hena Trehil comes home in second, and Dutreya is third. They're from Belgium. And here comes Zapata Ortiz from Colombia. Three silver medals he won on the track. And uh, he is going to come home in fifth place. Uh, it was in lane seven who won that race originally on the start list but uh, good to see him out there too Zar uh, Vosniuk of Ukraine the 50 meter freestyle so great swim from him to win Vosniuk the head of Pena uh, Trujillo of uh, Colombia who came home in second he was also a medalist earlier on in these games in the track and field the IT3 category in the 200 meters Splendid swim for Vosniuk of Ukraine. Most of these swimmers have already been in action in the 100 meters freestyle earlier on. And there were some very good performances in those. are coming up later in the day for all the swimmers so we will have the second heat of the ISC 53 very shortly for you and we move to the ISD competition and then we will have seven heats in the ISE category which is the most uh, popular of all of the categories coming up today so that is the confirmed times for the first heat in the ISC Vosniuk, good win for him. 
winning by 5.55 seconds over Pena Trejil of Colombia with the Belgian Thierry Dutria coming home third place. Well, come the swimmers for the second heat in the men's 50 meters freestyle. I C S Roberto Como of Italy, Garrett Kuwada of the United States, Alberto Almeida Arcaniguez of Colombia, Isaiah Staley of the USA, Lee Jik of Korea, and Avtandil Mitsubitsa of Georgia, who's uh, swimming in his only swimming event here right now. So Bosniak uh, set the time to beat in the previous heat, 35.08. We'll see if any of the swimmers can get close to matching that here in this heat. We saw Como go particularly well earlier on in the 100 metres freestyle. In Italy, from Italy, he's in lane two. Kuwada in lane three. Showing up best at, at the moment is Almeida Arcaniguez of Colombia. He is like an absolute machine. He is swimming superbly. Flying off the platform. And he is looking brilliant. He's not going to be headed in this one, is he? Good time, too, 32.75. Really good one there for Alberto Almeida Arcaniguez. Coming home in second, Garrett Kuwada, just ahead of Como in third. Not much between them, less than a second. And Isaiah Staley, a great swim from him to come home fourth. Lotsubutza has finished for Georgia in his only swimming event. He's come home in fifth. And Lee from Korea. 52.75. So, very fine swim there for the Colombian. Who finished with a bronze in the IT1 1500 meters on the track in the athletics. And he wins that heat. And a very impressive time. 32.75. That's almost three seconds faster than Bosniuk won the previous heat. In. You can see he really flew off the platform, off the diving blocks, didn't he? Terrific swim from him. As he sets the fastest time in that category in the men's 50 metres freestyle. up we've got the ISD category three heats coming up in this so we have around 18 swimmers who will be in action in the ISD category so after this category we've got two more 50 meter freestyle categories in the ISE 
both for men and women coming up. So here are the swimmers in the 50 meter freestyle first heat on the ISD category. Nathan King, right at the top of the screen. Travis White of the United States, Francois of France, Marius Typhus of Romania, Gionti Story of the United States, and John Corton of Belgium. And they're underway. So let's see how they go here. Francois from France, it's a Romanian, Marius Typhus. He's showing out in the middle of the pool at the moment. He's featured strongly in the two other swims that we've seen in the 50 back and the 100 free. But he's absolutely blitzed them here, Marius Typhus. Good swim by the Colombian to come home in second. Rudio Francisco. So has come home in second, a third, a second rather. And, uh, well, a very small, fine swim there for Typhus. He proved far too good for them there. And his busy day has been rewarded as Chianti Story. Gave it everything as well to come home in third. Francois was fourth. Nathan King from Australia is in fifth and followed by Courtney and White. But all about Marius Typhus, that race. Good swim for him. 34.97. He wins that heat. The first in the 53 ISD category. Got off to a great start and never let his opponents come back into the contest. Very efficient turn as well. Timing of the turns is a very important. Really can propel off the wall and come home very strongly. A fine swim there for the Romanian, Marius Typhus to win that heat, the first of three here in the ISD category. Thank you. 
So out come the swimmers now for the second heat of the men's 50 meters freestyle in the ISD category. Sierra Fernandez of Colombia, Shalom Zanzuri of Israel, David Moncrief of the UK, Shek Stipian of Poland, Justin James just got a shot of him there of the USA, Matthias Henrik Haas of Estonia. the field for the second of three heats Justin James just getting set veteran of the USA Air Force Master Sergeant keep your eye on the Estonian in uh, lane seven he's uh, this is his only swimming event also competed in indoor rowing in the IR5 in the one meter one minute sprint. It's the only two events that he competed in. Matthias Henrik Pass. So a proud moment for him as he gives it everything in this 50 meter freestyle heat. <laughs> Away he goes and the rest of the swimmers. Zanzuri made a good start in lane three. Moncrief and four, the 40 year old from Hampshire. Active in the RAF, still as a mechanical engineer. 14 tours of Afghanistan, three of Iraq, incredible career. Great turn from Zanzuri, the Israeli. He's got the lead now. And he's pulling away as well. Good swim from Shalom Zanzuri. Finishing really well. 34.78, good swim. Moncrief coming home in second. Sierra Fernandez, Colombia. Good swim from Justin James as well. And his pass coming home. He'll get a rousing reception, the Estonian. And there he is. That's a great uh, moment for him. Shalom Zanzuri of Israel. Very fine swim from him. He wins it 34.78. 2.56 seconds ahead of Moncrief with Sierra Fernandez home in third. No sign of Lezek Stepian in that race, which is a shame because he swam very well in his earlier events. The 100 free and the 50 back. Maybe he's, he's saving himself for those two events because he looks like a medal contender for sure. Very good swim, though, for... Sansuri halfway through it was pretty tight but in the end he pulled away nicely Third heat coming up here of this ISD men's 50 metres freestyle. Third and final heat. Six swimmers. In fact, there might even be seven in this race. Let's see if they're all on the start line. Looks like some of them have uh, decided not to take part, which is a shame, but... Oh, no, they all look there. So we're going to have a look at Victor Eduardo Leal in lane one for Colombia. Cooper Blackwood of Australia in two. Matt Tyndall of Canada in three. Nathan Huddy of the UK in four. Thierry of France in five. Ihor Derman of Ukraine in six. Richard Davies is back there in lane seven. He'll be the one to beat. And look at him fly out of the blocks already. He is such a good swimmer, Richard Davies.
making it. Good swim coming in from Cooper Blackwood at the top in the yellow cap. And Richard. Twenty-eight, twenty-eight. Great time for Cooper Blackwood and Nathan Huddy coming home in third. Good swim by a lot of swims and uh, swimmers in that race. Davies, twenty-eight, twenty-eight, proving far too good. Unbeaten in his three races so far today, and he looks like he is going to be winning lots of golds in this Invictus Games swimming meet later today Blackwood's there too the 25 year old from Sydney Nathan Huddy really cool to see him come home and third medically discharged in 2004 he's had some real health problems not only with an injury in Iraq but also a medical problem with his heart as well and Nathan Huddy doing great things in the pool here in Dusseldorf Davies, my word, he's a fine swimmer. So the top four from that heat all qualified for the final. So Derman is also through from Ukraine. So really good swim from the top four to get through final of that men's 50 freestyle in the ISD category. Well, shortly we'll be moving into the ISE category in the men's 50 metre freestyle. We've got seven heats coming up in this particular event. So that's next on the program. Then we'll be followed by the women's heats in the ISE 50 metre freestyle. And then we're going to move to three breaststroke categories before finishing the session with the mixed freestyle relay heats. So that's always going to be the cut and thrust, isn't it? It's going to be fun to watch those coming up right at the end of the session. But don't forget, there's more swimming, lots more swimming coming up later today with uh, the heats and some other categories and also the finals. So we now move through to the men's 50 ISC. Just three swimmers in this first heat. Robert End from Germany, Jürgen Kassenbach in the middle from Germany, and Henrik Martin Andersen of Denmark. And he's the swimmer leading at the moment. Close to winning a medal in the indoor rowing in the IR6 category. In the four minute endurance, he finished fourth. Competed in powerlifting as well. And he is. Anderson wins, 37.02, good time. There's Cousin Bach coming home in second, and Robert End. So there's the win for Henrik Martin Andersen of Denmark. 37.02. Good solid win for him in this race. 4.96 seconds ahead of Jürgen Kassenbach of Germany. by all three, three swimmers.
So that was the first of seven heats. Here's the list of the swimmers for the second heat now. Bob Grantham in lane one. The man, the RAF aircraft maintenance tech from Oxfordshire, Frederick of France. Mikael the Tagliano of Denmark. David Jarvis of the UK in this race too. Henrik Sodergren of Denmark. Paul, Charlie Charles is back from the UK. And Mortiz Mineke of Germany. Flat out as they go for two lengths of the pool. In the ISC 50 metres freestyle. And it's Charles showing out again. The 45-year-old from Devon. taken him 13 14 seconds to get to the first turn and only turn of this race and charles is sneaking clear again good swim in the top by grantham he's giving it absolutely everything but charles 28 49 grantham comes home second and jarvis it's a clean sweep for the uk great swims from all three Enjoy that. Charles 28 49. Grantham 2.69 behind in second. And it was Jarvis from Scottish, uh, from Scotland rather. And he finished in third place ahead of Sudagren. Good swim by all four of the, the British swimmers. They would have enjoyed that one. The IC category. Just joining us is for swimmers with psychological injuries or minor functional impairments that don't qualify them for a physical impairment class. Plenty more heats to come. Still five more in this category and the lineup for the next one Carl Woodward of Australia Ryan Kelly his compatriot Frederick van or van Lippeveld of Belgium Terry Jones of the UK Ryan Arthur from the USA Dan King of Australia Bob Bob Beaudry of Canada and Bradley Mazzaferi of Australia so four Australians in this heat Ryan Kelly, the one to watch perhaps in lane two. He's looked uh, brilliant in the 100 free and the 50 meter backstroke. Great start on lane one, two by Carl Woodward. So it looks like the two Aussies at the top, uh, dueling it out and now Kelly Getting his nose in front, halfway through the race. Both turn, Woodward and Kelly, very well. Massa Ferry's doing well on the bottom, as is Daniel King. Could the Aussies go one, two, three, four in this heat? Now Ryan Kelly starts to stretch out in lane two. He wins. Woodward is second. Dan King third, and Massa Ferry comes home in fourth. Wow, wow, wow. How impressive was that? By Australia. Four Aussies, one, two, three, four. And Kelly's 27.50 is the fastest time so far. Still four more heats to go. He was just under a second faster than Paul Charles in the previous heat. good swim from him and he continues to really be one of the, the swimmers setting the standards here in the pool today with a win by 0.82 of a second over his compatriot and great uh, swims by King and Mazaferi as well Ryan Arthur tried his best 
in that race, came home in seventh. But in the end, it was an Aussie benefit with all eyes at the top of the pool there. With Kelly and Woodwin in great form. Well done to Ryan Kelly of Australia from Port Macquarie, ex Navyman, who is uh, winning that heat. Now we go to the fourth heat. Jean Christophe Genico in lane one from Belgium. Alexander Pomomarov of Ukraine in two. Yena Bernard Mathieu of Belgium in three. Jeffrey Peters from the USA in four. Michael Cameron of Aussie in five. Dengizi Sertava of Georgia in lane six. Milan Andresen of Germany in seven. Justin Donnelly of Australia in eight. And it looks like Cameron and Andresen are the two swimmers leading at the halfway stage. Andresen, the German, did a great turn and might just have his nose in front just over Michael Cameron, who's swimming in his only event here. So yes, Andresen's going to take the win in that heat ahead of Michael Cameron. Time not quite as quick as the previous two heats, but still Andresen did well. Justin Donnelly coming home in third, the 47-year-old from Port Adelaide, who lives in Queensland now, ex-army man, serving in Afghanistan and East Timor. But Michael Cameron taking the win there. Rather, Milan Andresen taking the win over Michael Cameron, rather. A little bit in there by 0.64 of a second. McDonnelly 5.25 seconds behind the winner in third place. Justin Donnelly absolutely celebrating his time there. And he served in Afghanistan, East Timor. A lot of injuries in his career. Parachuting, combat shooting injuries, stress issues as well. And Justin Donnelly's had some real challenges to overcome in his life, but to come home in third, he's just stoked. So well done to him. Here's the fifth heat now of the men's IAC. 50 metres freestyle. Kenton Dill of Canada. Brian Hotchkiss of the USA. Benjamin Theis of Germany. Gilla Colby of Israel. William Cruz from the USA. Jamie McGlinchey of Australia. Jan Goodkunst of Germany. And Helen, or rather Alan Hutebrandt of Denmark. So McGlinchey, the Australian, looking to match his compatriots have done so well in previous heats. Let's see how these uh, eight swimmers go in heat number five. Best time of the heat so far is Ryan Kelly, the Australian, 27.50. See how these go and making a great start was McGlinchey, 30 year old from Sydney, hometown of Brisbane. But he's made a cracking start here, the Australian. He's a crane rigging operator, multiple knee injuries, severed hand ligaments. At the top of the screen is Kenton Dill from Canada. He's going well too, the Army crewman. 
had tours of Bosnia and two times to Afghanistan, but it's going to be the winner of Jamie McGlinchey, just ahead of the Canadian. And Gil Akobi has uh, done brilliantly to come home in third place from Israel. But another win to another Aussie. All the Australians swimming really well here. Ryan Kelly, remember, has the fastest time at 27.50. McGlinchey, 31.13. So that one, that hit a little slower, but he'll take the win, won't he? Kenton Dill from Canada. And Gil Akobi coming home in third place. With Hotchkiss in fourth for the USA. Still more, two more heats to come in this ISE men's 50 meter freestyle category. I hope you're enjoying the action. And then we'll be into the women's freestyle ISE heats, and there's four of those coming up. And that will be the last of the of the categories. before we move to breaststroke. So here's the next heat coming up of the men's 50 metres freestyle. It's heat six. Sal Palic of Germany, Donald Kalira of the USA, Marek Krzysztofik of Poland, Seren Hall of New Zealand, Trolls Michelson of Denmark, Mike Brest of Germany, Yevne Hill, Krenyok of Ukraine, and Tomasz Zdziaski of Poland in lane eight. Second to last heat of the men's 53 in the ISC category. Making a great start in lane two is Donald Calero of the USA. Absolutely flying up the top of the pool. Going well to at the bottom too, the Ukrainian and the Polish swimmer in lane eight, Zazatsky. But look at the form of Calero. This is going to be a good time, not as fast as the Aussies earlier, but Calero has broken 30 seconds. Kirionik has come home in second. Great swim for Ukraine and Zdziaski of Poland is third. Well, Calero, 29-23. That makes him, looks like it's got the fourth fastest time so far. Here's Michelson coming home from Denmark. Great swim, well done. But Donald Calero gets the job done there. The American. And he wins, breaking 30 seconds. Kirionok of uh, Ukraine. 35-4, so 1.31 seconds behind the winner. And Zdziaski did well too, to finish in third, just ahead of Seren Hall of New Zealand. Some great form in that last race. Let's see how the last seven go. James Rogers in the UK from the UK in lane one. Maxime of France in two. David Geraghty of Germany in three. Bryce of Brice of France in four. Amitai Arnon of Israel in five. Daniel Werner of Germany in six. Jens Nemaya of Germany in seven. And William Hajaka of the US in lane eight. So the last of the heats now in the men's 53. 
lot at stake for these last swimmers as they try and qualify for the final. Well, an even start, perhaps lane seven. Nimai's got the best start. Arnon in the middle of the pool from Israel is starting to show out now. He's already shown out on the 50 bank. Right next to him is Brisse of France. Nothing between them at the moment. Also in lane one, James Rogers. Keep your eye on him right at the top of the screen there, the 37 year old. And now Arnon from Israel. Oh, what a fish. That was power. Broken 30 seconds as well. Just ahead of the Frenchman. Rogers is on home to get third. A good run, or good swim rather, from all of those top three. Geraty just come home fourth ahead of his compatriot, Nemaya. Uh, this race, the 53, is going to be something to watch a little bit later on with Arnon getting the win in the last heat of the ISE 50 freestyle. 1.44 seconds. Just the top two there qualifying for the final with uh, all of the qualifiers through. It's been a very competitive heats with Ryan Kelly, the fastest time, 27.50. And, yep, you needed to swim around under 31 seconds, it seems, to get into the final. So that race for the gold is going to be really interesting coming up a little bit later on. We hope you enjoyed the heats of the men's 53 next We've got the heats of the women's 53 in the ISE. Stay with us, it's coming next. Here's the lineup for the first heat of the women's 50 meters freestyle in the IEC. Danielle Stevens of the UK, Angela Euson of the United States, and Cody Morton of the UK. So just the three swimmers, four heats coming up in this category. Houston makes the first start. In fact, in lane three, it's actually Jessica Daiko of Canada. Daniel Stevens is coming up in the next heat. So here goes Houston. Well clear at the halfway mark. Pretty close between Daiko and uh, Morton. But it's all about Angela Houston. He's doing a fine job of coming home here. Strong swimmer, 41-2 medals, golds on the, on the track. In the 
field rather with discus and shot put so here comes Daiko from Canada in second she's from Edmonton and here comes Cody Morton in third place 28 year old from Devon works and uh, as I touched on earlier in the Royal Navy Recovery Center supporting the wounded I just have so much admiration for people like that another good swim from Cody Morton and uh, well done to Angela Euson 35 55 so that time there is the one to beat got to finish in the top eight in these heats to qualify for the final and we'll see if Euson's time will be good enough for that to happen. second hit coming up now of the women's 50 meters freestyle so seven swimmers coming out to compete in this one Danny Stevens from the UK in one Stacey Adam from New Zealand in two Alana Ball from the USA in three Erin Brigden from Australia in four those two swimmers are really good Ball and Brigden Julia Eirik of Germany, Natalie Schaefuan of Canada, and Stephanie Jackel, or Jackel rather, of Germany in lane seven. Now, Jessica Daiko is not swimming in lane one. She was in the previous heat. Danny Stevens from the UK is in this heat. And she is quite a story. There's Danny Stevens. She was, uh, had an accident underwater, trapped under a life raft. Left with epilepsy after being denied oxygen for a period of time. And uh, she also has a fear of water. So this is quite a story. Keep your eye on her. She's in lane one, Danny Stevens from Team UK. So all eyes on the middle of the pool to see who wins between Ball and Brigden, who have been two of the best women swimmers so far. And look at Brigden. She is flying out of the blocks. The Aussie. Brilliant swim from her so far. She is a gun. No question, as we see Eidek turn particularly well for Germany as well. But Brigden putting some serious distance between her and Alana Ball of the United States. Brigden in 31.26, great swim. Ball comes home in second. And it looks like Eirik is going to get third. Let's look at the top of the pool for Danny Stevens. Good swim in seventh there for lane seven, Jakul. But there's the winner, Erin Brigden. What a great swimmer she is. She is really going well. And Danny Stevens has just finished in 56-66. Amazing achievement. Touched on before, trapped under a life raft in an underwater accident, has a fear of water, but she is competing here to try and conquer that fear in the hope that she can take her son, Henry, swimming. A really proud moment for her to finish the race. Not only for her, but her son Henry and her fiance John as well. And I don't know how well, that is bravery personified that someone can overcome that hurdle and that fear, that phobia, and get in there at the Invictus Games. And 
show it how it's done just like Erin Brigden did right there and no wonder she's smiling she has been very impressive in all three of her races to date so far Brigden wins in 31-26. Ball was second, 34-39. And Julia Heidek of Germany, 39-66. Still two more hits to come in the women's 50 freestyle in the ISE. So still got to check out the form of another... 16 swimmers yet as they try and make the final of the 50 freestyle. Remind you too that we have breaststroke coming up next. Three categories of breaststroke 50 meters swimming. And then we're into the mixed four by 50 meters relay to end this session. So third heat of four coming up now in the women's 53. Swimmers from the United States, there's three of them in this race. A couple from the UK. We also have swimmers from Ukraine, Israel and Canada coming up. five and atmosphere here in the stadium sure it's been portrayed for you wherever you're watching around the world great event and hope you're not only enjoying the swimming but of course uh, all the other sports that have been held and will be held to come over the next few days so here are here's the field for heat three or four sydney rose of the u.s julia five scott of Ukraine. Suzanne Brown, Carly James of the United States, Jenny Hartley and Becky York is out there again. How good has she been in this meet so far? Laran Koryat of Israel, Erica Moore rounds out this heat from Canada. Fastest time of the the heat so far has been Erin Brigden, 31.26. Comfortably clear of the rest of the field. She's three and a half, three, almost three and a half seconds faster than second fastest uh, swimmer at the moment, Alana Ball of the USA. Slow to get a bit, bit uh, there's, a, there's Erica Moore, but she'll get into her form now. But straight away, we could see York kicking clear of the field again already. Almost a body length in front of James and Jenny Hartley. Turning first was York, the musician, Royal Marines veteran. Very talented all-round swimmer and musician so she's powering away to win yet another hit the third on the trot in all disciplines so york touches good wind swim for her looks like carly james was going to come home in second place jenny hartley from shropshire in the uk is third nice scenes there for the two english swimmers 
obviously very close. You've got to love Jenny Hartley's story as we see Erica Moore coming in here to finish her race. You've got to love Jenny Hartley's story. You finished third in that heat there. She joined the general corps and then completely retrained as a doctor. Pretty bold stuff. Then had to be med medically discharged in 2017 after developing a wrist injury and couldn't hold a weapon anymore. So Hartley came third there. Rebecca York, though, did brilliantly. She won that 36.09. Another smart time. But uh, to put that time in perspective, Erin Brigden from Australia, who won the previous heat, was 31.26. So almost five seconds faster. That's incredible. Over such a short distance, the 50 metre distance. It shows you the imposing form that Brigden, the Australian, is in. But take nothing away from York. He swam beautifully to win that heat. And there's that moment again between York and Hartley. Great stuff. crowd has really built up and has stayed strong all the way through. A couple of Israeli swimmers have done very well in this session. Sure we'll feature them in the finals coming up later. So fourth and final heat now of the women's 50 metres freestyle in the ISE category. Ramona team of Germany is in lane one. Verity Sanchez of Australia in two. This one, Nicole Favuza from the USA. Lana Taylor of Canada. Amanda Sands of the UK. Yalin Barr of Israel. Denise Medina of the USA. And Victoria Kamia of the USA. In this field as well. In fact, she might have not started in, the, in lane eight. We'll see you, but comes through here. This is going to be interesting. Inambar is going well in lane six, the Israeli. It looks like though Sanchez, another Aussie in lane two, might have turned first there. Yeah, Sanchez kicking away here nicely. Another impressive performance from another Australian. They are dominating in the pool. The Australians. Ernie Sanchez comes down to win that heat, 36-43. Inbar comes home in second, the Israeli. It looks like a team at the top from Germany is going to get third. With Fabuza coming home in fourth place. Well, Verity Sanchez gets the job done in lane number two for Australia, having quite the day in the heats. swims by Taylor, Medina and Sands to round out that heat as well. Got to keep going to the finish. Sanchez, your winner of that heat, 36-43. Ahead of Yael Inbar of Israel. The Ramona team of Germany coming home in third place. Check out the replay of that race. And well, it was an even start, but once the Aussie hit the water, Sanchez off she went and uh, comfortably pulled away over the latter half, particularly in that second length. Just proved far too good for her competitors in there. And in fact, Sanchez was the only swimmer to qualify for the final from that heat. Brickton was the top qualifier, 31-26, 3.13 seconds ahead of the second fastest swimmer, Alana Ball of the United States. Well, that concludes all the freestyle action.
other than the mixed relays which are coming up later but before we get there we're going to have three categories of fresh stroke and we're going to start with the men's isb category we have two heats coming up in this category and then we move to the ise category again which of those have uh, psychological or it's very minor physical injuries that don't make them eligible for other classes. We're going to have five heats in that and then the ISC women's with three heats. So we have an all 10 races of breaststroke action to look forward to right now. And here is the first of the ISB heats. Nazar Vuznik of Ukraine is back in the water. Ivan Molden, his compatriot, is racing in this. Nada Israel para Contreras of Colombia and Scott Caroon of the United States. Those are the four swimmers in this one. Bosniuk is a gold medal winner already at these games, having won in the indoor rowing IR2 four minute endurance category. Muldun. In fact, all four swimmers in this have won medals here. All in indoor rowing. So that's a, uh, that's a great story, isn't it? Vosniuk's not uh, starting, unfortunately. So we're down to three. Moldun, Para Contreras, the Colombian, and Karun, the American. Ivan Moldun, this is his only swimming event. He's got a technique that is working beautifully for him. Very strong in the upper body. Brilliant stuff from Molden here. He is just swimming the race of his life. It's absolutely brilliant to see. ISB, remember, is a uh, category which is, uh, features heavily disabled athletes. And that's a great swim for Ivan Molden of Ukraine. 58-69. Scott Karun, who's fought really well in his other events today, the 100 free and the 50 back. And the 50 free as well. It's tough yards in the breaststroke, isn't it? But Karun does well. And now here comes Nita Israel Para Contreras. Silver in the one minute sprint in the indoor rowing, the IR2 category. Well done. Great stuff there by all three swimmers to complete the race and uh, good spirit between them. It's wonderful to see. Ivan Mulden takes the win in the first heat of two. ISB breaststroke, men's 50 metres.
again, just a slight pause for you before we get into the second heat of the men's 50 breaststroke in the ice speed category. So out come the athletes now for the men's 50 breaststroke, ISB Heat 2. Second and last of the two heats. Camilo Andres, Castellano Sanchez from Colombia. We have Dimitro Holovian of Ukraine. Christian Vega of the USA. Eduard Jesus Guerrero Rios of Colombia. And Francisco Gennaro Petrazo. Osorio of Colombia in lane six. All of these swimmers been in action today. I've seen them. Uh, God, most of these swimmers now three times. Castiano Sanchez certainly been a star of these games. He's already won three golds in IT4 on the track. 100 meters, 200 meters, 400 meters, second in the 1500 as well. So he's going to swim in lane two. And he is quite the swimmer. He was fantastic in the 53 in his heats. 
So we'll see if he can replicate that form here in this heat. He's the smallest, but I tell you what, he gives it everything. I tell you, Christian Vegas made a good start, the American. Finished it with two silver medals, did Vega. But now you can see Castiano Sanchez starting to really move into gear nicely. He just swims with great urgency. He just gives it everything, every single race. He's an absolute joy to watch. Competed in indoor rowing as well. And he's also coming up in cycling and table tennis. And he's putting serious distance between him and Folovian, the Ukrainian. Fastest time in the first heat, 58-69. But he's easily inside that, 53-67. So he's the fastest qualifier for the finals. Another fantastic swim by him. Here comes Polovian, home in second. And he locks in a time 16.29 seconds behind the Colombian, 109.96. Two other Colombians in the field as well. Eduardo Jesus Guerrero Rios. Looks like he's going to finish in third. He's also competed in athletics and indoor rowing as well and he comes home in third and it's Pedraza Osirio who's giving it everything to finish next and Christian Vega coming home the American Well done to Christian Vega, the retired senior airman in the US Air Force. He's completed in his three events today. With real distinction and effort. So here we are, the time's locked in. Camilo Andres Castellanos. Sanchez. Comfortably winning the second heat. And that becomes the fastest qualifier through to the final.
qualify them for a physical impairment class. So we have uh, heats in the men's and women's 50 breaststroke to come shortly here on the broadcast. And it's due to start in just a few minutes time. Thank you so much, and good luck as well this week. <laughs> right, I'm going to do one more, and then I think we're going to have a sing song. Can I get in too? I would love to speak to some Aussies. We've got, let's, I'm going to come back to you guys, okay? Because I literally, I can't see a way in to get to the lake running behind the scenes. So let's have a sing song. Alan, let's sing this song. I know you will know the words to this one, okay? I want everybody singing, we're still in the venue. 
Well, here we go again with the swimming. That little interlude there. And we're back into the action now with the next heats of the breaststroke for you. Men's 50 metres breaststroke. ISE Heat 1. David Jarvis from the UK in lane 3. Carl Woodward of Australia in 4. Michael Stover of Germany in 5. And Henrik Martin Andersen of Denmark in lane 6. Well, the Aussies have been on fire all the way through, particularly in the men's competition. And Carl Woodward is again showing out nicely here. He served in South Sudan, Asia, USA, New Zealand, from Terrigal in New South Wales. And he's got a handy lead over the Dane at the moment, Henrik Martin Anderson. But it's Kyle Woodward, bronze medalist earlier in these games in wheelchair rugby. Joined the Air Force in 2007, discharged earlier this year with chronic back pain and mental health issues and he's going great here at these games winning that heat 39 62 very nice win for carl woodward there of australia good swim by anderson from denmark to come home in second 41 70. Over just ahead of Jarvis. Got a good one there for Carl Woodward of Australia. Another heat win to the Aussies. continues I hope you're enjoying it four more hits to come remember the fastest eight qualifiers go through to the final Men's 50 back breaststroke uh, IEC continues. Heat number two coming up of five. And uh, now we have Abatai Arnon of Israel in lane one. Bradley Mazaferi of Australia in two. Bo Bob Beaudry of Canada in three. Thomas Croner of Germany in four. Jamie McGlinchey of Australia in five. Michael. Vitagliano of Denmark in six. Bob Grantham of the UK in seven. And Mikrest of Germany in eight. Two laps, two lengths of the pool in the breaststroke. Time to beat Carl Woodward. 39-62. See if any of these swimmers can get near that. As it looks like it's Kroner. This is his only swimming event. Thomas Kroner. Also competed in athletics and has got some archery coming up on the last day. It's a good swim in the bottom here by Bree. So it's the two Germans going particularly well at the moment. Also Grantham right down the bottom here. Grantham's going to take the win. Good swim there by Robert Bob Grantham, the 28-year-old from Oxfordshire. RAF aircraft maintenance tech on Puma helicopters. And he takes the win in a time of 42.54. He was 3.94 seconds ahead of Thomas Croner. And Brest comes home in third. For that time there, 42.54, almost three seconds slower than Carl Woodward's time in the previous heat. But still Grantham takes the win and puts himself in a good position to move through to the final. Well, 
still plenty of good swimmers to come. Ryan Kelly is coming up in heat number five. He has been amazing so far in the heats. See if he continue his stellar form in heat number five. But in that heat right there, it was all about Bob Grantham. He swam beautifully. Got injured, serious ankle injury while training for triathlon. It's had a massive impact on his well-being. So really pleased that he's in the pool. Cutsing it out here at the Invictus Games. So out come the swimmers for heat number three in this men's 50 breaststroke competition in ISE category. Tom Grunwald of Germany is going to be in lane one in this heat. Justin Donnelly, who was stoked in that 50 freestyle heat, wasn't he? Couldn't start screaming with delight after posting his best time. Ryan Arthur from the USA is in lane three. Paul Charlie Charles in lane four. And Kenton Dill from Canada in five. Scott Robertson from the UK in six. Frank Lindenbeck and Jans Niemeyer of Germany round out the field in this heat. Charles is a swimmer to watch in lane four. He's featured strongly in the some previous races. Same with Kenton Dill in lane five from Canada. Dill is from Ontario, an army crewman. He's had deployments in Bosnia two times in Afghanistan, but there goes Charles. So 21 years in the Marines from Devon. Once again, it's him that leads halfway through the race as Dill looks to hold down, lock down second place. And Charles got a good couple of body lengths lead on his Canadian rival. Into the last few metres now, and it's going to be Charles again who wins. 38.03. Dill and Robertson round out the top three. All Charles again, too strong. And the time of 38.03, that is the fastest time in the three heats so far. So very good swim again from Charles. Dill two featuring strongly, and uh, well done to Scott Robertson from the UK. It's his only swimming event. Did compete in indoor rowing, and he's got some table tennis and sitting volleyball to come. So good work by Robertson to come home in third. We are Paul Charles again at the top of his heats. Looking solid to move through to the men's 50 breaststroke ISE final coming up later today. Great swim from Charles as he swam strongly all the way to the finish. Great job by Kenton Dill as well. So we move to the fourth heat now of the IC 50 breaststroke. Another eight swimmers about to give it a crack. Robert Pierce from the from New Zealand, Daniel Werner of Germany, Jeffrey Peters of the USA. Rolls Michelson of Denmark, James Rogers of the UK, Patrice Lombe of Belgium, Yevgeny Kirionik of Ukraine, and William Pachaka of the USA. Looks like Patrice Lombe of Belgium is 
on the starting blocks. And we'll see how all these swimmers go. James Rogers, 37-year-old from Wiltshire. Could be one to watch in the middle of the pool. And that's turning out. Today on Opka's going well for Ukraine. He's also swum in the 53 and the 100 free earlier in this session. So those are the two shown out at the moment. Kriyonok has got the lead just ahead of Rogers. UK's team captain is Rogers here at uh, Dusseldorf. But he's been beaten in the second place by a very fine swim there by Yevgeny Kriyonok of Ukraine. We're always happy when a Ukrainian does well at this Invictus Games. 40 to 40 48 was his time. So that should be good enough to get him into the final. It's just 2.45 seconds slower than Paul Charles's time in the previous heat. Fine scenes again. So we see Robert Pierce, New Zealand's team's co captain. Very happy that he was able to complete that race. Finished in sixth place. But uh, Kirionok took the win by 0.98 of a second ahead of Rogers with William Tachaka of the USA coming home in third. So that's uh, four heats done. We have one last heat to go in the men's 50 breaststroke before we go to the women in the ISE category. Three heats of that coming up. But here are the last eight swimmers. In the breaststroke, Marek Kristofik of Poland. Donald Calero has swum well for the US. Daniel King and Ryan Kelly of Australia. Kelly, oh, he's a machine. Jakob. Weidenmann of Denmark. Werner Marmon of the USA. We saw him win gold in the discus on the, uh, in the track and field recently. Tomasz Sadzarski's back out there from Poland. Brian Hotchkiss there too from the USA. Ryan Kelly, the Australian, the 40-year-old. Keep your eye on him in lane four. And Donald Calero in lane two. And also going well in three is Daniel King of Australia. But Kelly is blitzing them again. Spinal injury in 2019. He's got four kids. And he's swimming so well here in Dusseldorf. Served his country in the Middle East in the Solomons. And Theory is winning 35.87. He's set the fastest time in this event as well. Top qualifier in every event that he has featured in so far. Daniel King of Australia's come home second in 39.96, to be followed by Donald Calero of the USA, 41.49. What about Ryan Kelly? Well, Weidenmann did really well as in his only swimming event, finished fit. We'll see him on the table, tennis table, in the next couple of days. But Ryan Kelly, 
he and Erin Brigden, who's been dominating the women's swimming so far today. They are, have been absolutely brilliant. So Kelly and King, they qualify for the final out of that heat. With the other five coming from the two previous heats. Along with Carl Woodward, who qualified another Australian from heat number one. So four Australians have qualified for the final in the men's 50 metres breaststroke. Kelly, Daniel King, Carl Woodward, and also Jamie McGlinchey has qualified as well. In fact, just going through the list again, Jamie McGlinchey has just missed out, so it's just the three, but still, great effort by the Australians in the men's 53, a 50 breaststroke rather, in the ISE category. Next up, we have three heats in the women's 50 metres breaststroke, and then we're going to have the two heats in the mixed four by 50 metres freestyle relay. That's to come in the session. Stay with us.
women's 50 meters breaststroke action about to start in the heats. We've got three heats coming. Remember the categorization in this category. Functional profile is uh, that competitors with psychological injuries or minor functional impairments, they do not qualify them for a physical impairment class. Here is the first heat. We've got uh, seven swimmers ready to go. Sands, Yusin, Sanchez, James, Ball, Inbar, and Chafe Yun. Two lengths of this 25 meter pool. Swimmers to have featured strongly earlier in the session include Verity Sanchez of Australia and Alana Ball of the United States. So we'll see if those two swimmers feature again. The ball is showing out strongly. So too is Carly James. And Angela Yusin. Could it be an American 1-2-3 coming? As James and Ball turn first. Sanchez is just uh, not quite keeping pace in the breaststroke. But Alana Ball again showing out really well. She's a very strong swimmer. One of the best we have here. 45.63, she's going to lock that time in. Good win for her, comfortable win. Yusin's come home in second, and Sanchez snuck up to grab third. So well done to Alana Ball. Lieutenant Commander in the US Special Operations Command. Also competed in the powerlifting, finishing in seventh. So she wins that heat comfortably over Angela Yusin, who won two golds in field events on in the athletics. Verity Sanchez coming home in third for Australia. Remember the top eight go through to the final. And a ball once again. Final round swimmer. She hit the wall nice and strong too. In the end finished 6.57 seconds ahead of Yusin in second place. So here's the lineup for the second heat in the women's 50 breaststroke ISE category. Victoria Kamir of the USA, Yulia Pivska of Ukraine. Becky York is out there again for the UK, along with Kelly McVitie, Erin Brigton. She's there again. Cody Morton of the UK, Suzanne Brown of the USA. All of these swimmers have been in the pool before in earlier events. We'll see if Brigton can continue her hot streak of form as we see a, a few withdrawals on the inside lanes, including York and McVitie. Suzanne Brown is showing strongly, but there goes Brickton again. She was so much faster than everyone else in the 53. And it looks like she is dominating this breaststroke heat again. Remember, Brickton has already won gold in powerlifting and two golds in indoor rowing at these Invictus Games. And she is on track to win several gold medals in the pool as well. Look at the form of Brickton, 40.69. That is almost five seconds faster than Alana Ball. When she won the previous heat. Brown comes home in second. And here comes Cody Morton to complete proceedings for the UK. Now Morton overcome with emotion. Wonderful scenes for Morton. It really means so much for her to get in the pool and to compete. 
good news is she's got some archery and some sitting volleyball to come as well. Brickton, just a star. business does Erin Brigden no doubt about it so one more heat to come as we look at Brigden's time 40.69 dominating that heat ahead of Brown who came home in second place ahead of Kamir and Morton Last heat now, as the swimmers line up for the women's 50 meter breaststroke. Lana Taylor of Canada in one, Nicole Favuza of the USA in two, Loran Koryat of Israel in three, Erica Moores in four from Canada, Alicia Van Biesen of Belgium is in lane five, Stephanie Jackel of Germany and Jenny Hartley of the UK. And Hartley made a great start, didn't she? Got it away to a cracking start there. Hartley has already won two golds in the IT7 category on the athletics on the track. And she's doing well in the breaststroke. So Hartley turns first. And she's well clear of Jaco in second. He's got a very short breaststroke, but it's working nicely here in this heat. She's going to take the win comfortably, and she might even make the final. In fact, I reckon she definitely will make the final. 46-56. Great swim by Hartley. Jackal's come home second with Van Beesen coming home third from Belgium. So Hartley will take the win by 4.95 seconds. Very comfortable win indeed. I don't know if that's a look of surprise or what it is, but she should be very happy for winning that heat. Very comfortable time indeed, and uh, that's certainly going to be good enough for her to get through to the final. But again, Brigden in the previous heat is just so far every, uh, far ahead of everyone else. Almost five seconds faster than anyone else. Incredible performance from Brigden in that previous heat. But Hartley takes the win in heat three to qualify for the final. Jenny Hartley. Wins heat number three of that women's breaststroke. So that leaves just the two heats in the mixed four by 50 meters freestyle relay to come. Stay with us, those two races are coming up to end the session very shortly. So the four teams to race in heat number one. 
United Kingdom, Denmark, Mark, Belgium, and the USA. See how these uh, four teams go. Yeah, some uh, lots of enthusiasm still here in the stadium. We've been going four hours in the session now. by 50 meter mixed relay. So, so remind you of the order. It's the United Kingdom at the top in lane one. Denmark in lane three. Belgium in lane four. And right down the bottom here, it's the United States. So far, it's the Danes who have got the early lead. But it's tight with the Americans right here with them. It's a great swim. It's the USA take a 0.34 of a second lead over Denmark. growing nicely as we come up to the halfway stage of this mixed 4x50 meter relay well, it's a great leg there by the Americans as they link their lead nicely United Kingdom moved into second place, by the way, after those after the first 100 metres. They're just under nine seconds behind the United Kingdom, uh, behind the USA, rather. Denmark and Belgium trail further behind. But the United States looking comfortable in this heat. There's 150 metres done. Americans go through the 150 at 149.30. And they're basically half a length clear now, or one length clear of the pool of the rest of the team, of the other teams. Extended their leader 12 seconds by the end of 150. And here comes the United States, winning in 217.92. Great performance by their team. They really powered away to a very comprehensive win. Here comes the UK coming home in second. 24.21 behind, just ahead of Denmark. So the American team of Heather Sea Lover, Alana Ball, Isaiah Staley, and Donald Calero. They were the swimmers in the pool. The UK had Daniel Stevens, Richard Davies, Scott Robertson, and Nathan Huddy. And uh, they were no match for the Americans, who moved over clear very quickly into the race and won by tw over 24 seconds. So, well done to the USA. UK finishing second, Belgium third, and Denmark coming home in fourth place.
fantastic swim, wasn't it? And that last leg in particular, as Donald Calero gave it absolutely everything. He did his 50 in 28.62. Very good split for him. the basketball, Michael Bellevue. Bellevue has four points, or excuse me, check that. And we are underway here in this third period of play. Team Canada looking to chip into this team unconquered one lead. That was a good look at the basketball. Ball tipped out of bounds, and it will go back to actually a foul on the play underneath. And it will be a shooting foul for Team Canada. That will put Robert Gilmore to the free throw line. He has one point already from the line today. Make that two points for Gilmore. four from the day from the line. And a foul called on the rebound. Basketball will go back to Team Unconquered one and Mandy Graff will inbound the ball. the wisdom room to move ball short rebound into anderson's hands graph with the rebound lets it go second chance opportunity and the ball gathered in there off of that third chance opportunity by team canada and robert gilmore i will go back to team canada now off of the foul 12 five seven point game plenty of time with 705 remaining in this one Fourth we go, we decide that uh, Team Conquered one will inbound the basketball here. Koika looking for a cutter. Whistle yeah, on the play and a two shot foul. That was from Ramona Thayan for the free throw line. The motor shooting two. Again, this is a mixed basketball, that, so you can have as many females or males on the court at one time. Six fifty-four to go. Human conquered one has led from the opening tip. Hannah has been there. They've had some pretty good looks, but really met by a tough, tough defense and the quickness of uh, Kevin Koika, number 10, for Team Unconquered 1. He had four points in the first period, four points in the second period, and that was really, has really thus far been the difference. Team Canada now with the basketball, under 6.30 to go in this third and final period. Oh, in the outstretched arms. And unfortunately, Robert Gilmore unable to reach the ball, turnover, and the ball will go back to Team Unconquered 1.
Kevin Koika with some room to go. Look out. Kevin loves shooting in pure motion, and he does do exactly what he was doing. Had that flow, got to the middle of the floor, and Kevin Koika now with 10 points to lead all scorers in this game. What fluid motion for Koika, and that was a big bucket. Change of baskets here now. And Leon Anderson doing a nice job cutting baseline for Team Canada for two more. First two points of the game for Leon. And a seven point game. This is a great opportunity. Gilmore can't convert. Rebound. For team uncut third one. Four minutes to go in this third and final period. Leon Anderson will inbound the basketball. Plenty of time here for Team Canada to get back into this game. Gilmore running baseline. Oh, and Short has a rebound. The putback short again. And he may have been fouled on the backside there by Mandy Graff. He was. So Robert Gilmore will head to the free throw line. Two very important free throws coming up here for Team Canada and Robert Gilmore with the clock stopped, 340 to go in this match. to eight now. Gilmore with three points on the game for Team Canada. We could look at it. Ball went off of Deion Anderson, so it'll be retained by Team Unconscious One. Anderson with a rebound, looking for the outlet. And Canada has to work quickly. The flip, your hemorrhages comes up with the no look pass. Team on Concord one off of the turnover, converting on the play, and that's two big points. And an eight point lead now for Team on Concord one. Martin Lubauer with the basket. He now has six. as we close in on the two minute mark towards the third and final period as Team on Concord won, trying to keep their record perfect here at Invictus Games 2023. Nice job by Dion Anderson to convert with two. It's a six point ball game. Anderson now with four. And a timeout taken on the floor. Tim Dobbs wants to discuss it with his team. Team Canada, Paul Bowes, also wanted to talk about it. We're going to listen down on the German team. Get 
John Anderson with four points on the ball game as the teams break the huddle out of the timeout. Locked certainly on the side of Team Unconquered one right now. Sixteen to ten. One oh nine to go. And it's pleasing with the rebound holds on to it. The outlet is there. And under a minute to go now. Great sportsmanship always displayed here at Invictus Games 2023. Well, we'll go back to Team Canada. Fifty-two point five to go in this game. An inverting turnover. And the Sneezings brings the ball in now. And my apologies, we had a different name and number for number 10 in the box. Dennis has had a spectacular game and has certainly been the difference for Team Unconquered 1. That got is short. 20.9 seconds to go. And it looks like Team Unconquered 1 is going to hold on here as a timeout is taken. Paul Bowes wants to discuss it with his team. Let's listen in. We get to advance the ball to the front court. That's why I called a timeout. by Eric Pruda here, the actual thought process of him there as he breaks the huddle. You hear the ball falls. He called the timeout to get that ball into the front court. Save some time off of the shot clock. Smart move. To see if they can convert on the timeout here. 20.3 seconds to go. The clock is moving. Team Canada with some work to do. All goes out of bounds and back to Team Uncockboard 1. Ten seconds to go in this game. And that'll do it. Team Unconquered 1 remains undefeated here at the Big Games 2023. They come away with a 16-10 victory over Canada here in full play 2 
they do of competition. And a great job by both teams as they will now meet for the handshake. Four and O. Oh. Team Unconquered won. They finish up the full play round. Team Canada drops to 0 oh 3 now. But they do have one more game left coming up a little bit later on against the United Kingdom. Great effort by both teams. Team Canada gotten on, on a roll a little bit later in this game. Just couldn't find the bucket met by a very stingy Team Unconquered 1 defense. Deion Anderson with a solid game for Team Canada. He finished with four ten points on the day. And Robert Gilmore also shooting very solid from the free throw line for Team Canada. He made three shots from the free throw line as well. Celebratory handshake between the two teams. Great sportsmanship here as always in the Invictus Games. Tennessee seeing a big day for Team Unconquered 1. He had 10 points to lead all scorers on the game for Team Unconquered 1. Great game for number 10 with 10. And a 16 to 10 victory over Team Canada. That's your final. Group B. Team Unconquered won now 4 0 with a 16 to 10 victory. We're here in the Invictus Village, fabulous village. You can see so much energy and action going on in the background, and you can catch up with one or two of the competitors, which is what I've done. I've bumped into the lovely Liran Koryat from Team Israel. Welcome, Liran. Thank First you time very much. Israel at the Invictus Games. How are you feeling about that? Very excited. Everyone is very excited about it. Yeah, and just marching into the arena at the opening, what, describe wow. your emotions then. I was knocked out. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> you were knocked out, you weren't there. <laughs> ah, well, it, look, it, looked, it looked at the team. You must have heard from the team how amazing it was. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about you then and how you came to, to be here. Uh, I did some swimming before I got injured. Um, and after I got injured, the uh, part of my rehabilitation was swimming. So that got you back on track. So what happened to you? Can you can you tell us what happened to you? Yeah, the, um, I lost I lost my I was in coma for seven days. I was crushed out all the body. Uh, and this was an accident with a with a truck with this a jeep. This was an accident with a jeep, and it took long uh, rehabilitation. And once I start, uh, once they took off my cast and everything, and I was free to walk, then I got back straight ahead swimming. And since then, I swim. So, what was the motivation? What really, really drove you? Because that must have been really difficult. Go back to life. Get back to life. Get back to be normal. In the swimming pool, you can do anything basically. It doesn't matter what your problems. You can be in the swimming pool. But you seem to have really reacted so well to everything because you were in a coma at one point. It took, so, took a long time to come back. Right. I didn't. I couldn't talk. I, I forgot how to talk. I forgot a lot of things how to do. So I had to start learning everything from the beginning. And was swimming the main drive because you swam as a child competitively, and th th did that open that door for you? I just wanted to be in the environment of water. It's quiet, you with yourself, you can compete yourself. And how did, how did you realize how good you were at swimming again? Did you realize that the passion come back for the sport? Um, just from the water. <laughs> you just love being in the I water, I just love right? being, being in the water. But your life has been about challenges, hasn't it? About someone saying you I can't do it. something and then you say, yes, I can. Exactly. This is what brings me back to life. But to how, prove everyone that I can. Yeah, but how easy is that to do? Describe how, because you must have had some down moments. You must have had difficult moments in your recovery. A lot. <laughs> A lot. So what else did they tell you you couldn't do? I can't. I will never be pregnant. I will never walk. Uh, there were, no one was very uh, positive about it. So I did my way alone. And tell us what happened because you have children now. Uh, I did a lot of other things in medicine. I went to uh, acupuncture and 
I tried everything as possible. And here you are. And tell us about your, your relationship with the Invictus Games. They, it was its first time this year, but you knew of them before? No, I ne I've never heard of the Invictus. Nine months ago, they told me, they asked me if I want to go. I said yes. And here I am. And here you are. And what are your family saying about what you've done and your achievements so far? My, young, my youngest child here is seven years old. He's excited. He's, he doesn't know what to do with himself. He runs from here to there to go. He's excited about it. They must be very proud of their mum. Yeah. 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 And what do you want to achieve here? What's the What's the plan for your event? Medal. <laughs> if possible. If not, I'll enjoy it. Yeah. That's the That's the main thing. Which events are you doing in the swimming? I do backstroke, freestyle, and backstroke. And which is your strongest? Which is the one we should be looking out for? Breaststroke, hopefully. Breaststroke. And how would you, much would it mean to you to do well for, for your country, for, for Israel, but also for, you, for yourself? Some pride for the country, for the first time at least. Well, good luck with that, Korea. It's been lovely meeting you. And Thanks thank so you much. very much indeed for, for, for joining us on the show. She's amazing, isn't she? And we wish her all the best for her events. Thank you. Seven, Dion Anderson. Ten, Michelle Bellevue. Thirteen, Danielle Comer. Twenty-four. Danish flag, I can see a Canadian flag. Flag of the United Kingdom. United Kingdom, listen up, make some noise! Here we go, Dusseldorf. Are you on the big screen? I want you clapping along, waving flags, if you bought a flag, that's what you brought it for. Wave it in the air! Clap along, this order. Let's hear it, Dusseldorf, for the United States 
Streets of America. And make some noise for the United Kingdom. Are you ready to put on for the tip off? Here we go, the first semi final. Substitution USA.
This one. Now keeping a close eye on the shot clock, the US as well, using all the time they can before it ticks down from 24 to zero. They're also making sure that the UK find it difficult to get into range within that allocated time. There's a block on green. The way he moves that chair and the way he weaves is a, a sight to behold. Got the long, long arms as well. Which helps. So time out. First chance to impart a few words of wisdom. Normally, they've been playing three eight minute periods, so there'll be a few more timeouts during each period. I think they might end up using their quota when it's two 15 minute periods rather than three of eight. Let's see if we can catch what Hannah Walker, the coach, is saying here. when you can catch what they're saying there with some highlights of this young man. Kevin Green. And nonchalantly, it drops. And USA leading 7-2. There's the restart. Frank Garlic quite often the man to bring it into the front court. Blakely, Green goes around the back and he's not checked. That was very casual, didn't quite come off. And the UK do have it back, Ross Freer underneath the basket. Well, it's very smooth. Uh, no look pass. One way, and he didn't even need to look Green to scoop that up and over. So Jules Allen to this man, David Argyle. A 50 year old RAF veteran from Lincolnshire. Or oh, Ross Freer off the backboard and then off the rim of the basket. And each time that happens, it invites the United States to come down again. A real speed and skill with Green. United Kingdom trying to block, trying to get, trying to keep an eye on him, but really difficult. Oh! There's the two from Brent Garlic. Four points in the game, and it moves that lead out to seven points. He made that one look really, really easy, didn't he? Perfect basket. Can the United Kingdom get back on track here? Get that point gap closed. Gary Kelly, the Lance Corporal from Cambridgeshire, having a go of that one. As we can just see that he twisted actually with his right side. He wasn't quite, quite stable, was he? Got a little shot. Chance here to just bring it back a little. And on that occasion, it's always good if you can just get one of, one of those to count. Just gives you that wee bit of confidence and keeping an eye on his American opponent there. Kevin Green is absolutely everywhere, and as is this man. And Garlic, look at the movement there, look at the movement. Jules Allen in the end managed to do enough, but 
unfairly says the official just gave him a little shot there which off balanced him as he was about to shoot and so here come the free throws a chance to extend that seven point margin oh beautiful that was an absolute peach that's how to do it effortless and again and again absolutely perfect and they do stretch that lead 10 to 2 now didn't even touch the sides the last four shots he's had it's just gone straight in doesn't need the backboard judge to perfection James Ryan coming back for the United Kingdom good shift from Kevin Green yep, having who departs the court bit of a rest now and you will see on the attack sorry United Kingdom on the attack Argyle, and he got it away to James Wren, who's now on court. Pinched away by Tony Smith. Garlic relentless. He was the top scorer in the wheelchair rugby competition for the United States. So he's sashayed his way through. Oh, that was absolutely magical. He's so fluid in his style and his technique there's almost a lang languidity about his his movement and the defense could do absolutely nothing about that absolutely perfect and great to watch he's a different class at the moment just to the right of the basket and just over halfway through his first half and garlic has been left all alone he can cruise through <laughs> and make it look even easier if that were possible he was dangerous and they get that opportunity on the break he had the space he had the time james wren was trying to get back but could do little about it and more points on the board for the usa 15 to oh and up at the other end It is going to be allowed to stand. The referee confirming that. Got it in before. Trigg will also have the free throws. Thirty-eight year old Matt Trigg signed up at 19 for 22 years. Been up to three years. He had an accident skiing. 13 operations metal bars holding him together but not mo much holding him back here it's the same spot ran with the oh. go from a little further out They're coming really really close to the united kingdom but just not quite close enough i wonder what you have to do to get that ball to fall through that net it will come but they don't want the usa to get too far ahead Here's to Marcus Garrett on for the United States who had this 11 point lead and another peach of a basket. This time it's from another replacement who's come on, Carly James. Staff Sergeant, still on active duty in the US Air Force. And what an impression she's made coming on. Oh, lovely basket. just had too far to reach here is Carly James the gap now 13 the UK making real progress getting back but there's freedom for McManus in the center who reaches and gets there it was a good piece of defending to prevent him but the US it's still there David Argyle manages to get his arm in there for the United Kingdom it was well played by the UK there. It was all happening, wasn't it? <laughs> Look at that arm going in. Really, really determined, David Argyle. So he'll get the chance to restart inside the final five minutes of the half. It is a running clock. Shot clock ticking down. USA have put good pressure on the UK in that situation. It's 
turns around again and here goes James. Familiar faces making up ground on the other side. Daniel Porthoff is also on. This is Gara. Tell you what reach he has in terms of collecting the ball as well. Gets it back. Oh, it's lovely movement in the centre of the court. And in it goes from Earl Olinger. Your name on the score sheet in the semi-final. Uh, you can get those passes nice and clean. Enables you to get a bit more time to make your next decision. Grab from Matt Trigo, oh, great collection. Just what we were talking about. Here goes Garrett, Martinez who made that interception is now making up ground number 20, but it's with Carly James. Who just rolls one around the rim and Trigg has also made up really good ground. Always so. looking around to see where he can pass it, which route he can get, who's in there, who's clear. Oh, and if in doubt, it's Matt Trigg. And is it going to go in? Oh, agonizingly close for the United Kingdom. If some of those are dropped. It would be an awful lot closer. It goes. It's an obvious thing to say, but they could easily be into double figures already, United Kingdom. They've had the chances. The margins in this game, absolutely tiny. Yeah. That won't count. Nineteen-four. On comes uh, James Rogers, who's made a, a very, very quick transition from swimming. It wasn't long ago that he was in the swimming competition, the team captain for the UK. He is now on along with Liz Lee. Yeah, so many of these competitors competing in multiple events here. And it's a busy calendar for some of them. But they absolutely love it. Uh, joining the show. Many therapy dogs are here. Service dogs helping those that need them and doing a great job too. Argyle allowed a little space to maneuver close around the back. He's got the chance to put one in and off the edge. And fielded by Martinez. And his teammates were trying to protect him. They're trying to keep the opponents away from him to allow him that space. That's all part of the game as well. USA. Start oh. wide in the north. That's beautiful from Kayla Saska. Straight through without touching the sides. Look at this one from the number three. An absolute beauty. She enjoyed that, and so she should. All those months and months of training are paying off. Martinez. Top scored in their second game against New Zealand. He's doing the Brent Garlic role of bringing it out. The movement's really, really good. And so too is the alertness on the rebound. The UK have got away with that one. The maestro in the midfield here. David Argyle again trying to find that space. We have a go himself. No, he's found another close one. James Rogers We're making good ground here. Martinez We're allowed a lot of time actually. There's an arm in. You can see that technique. You're allowed to just give a couple of good pushes in between the dribbling. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Off the rim from Kayla Saskia. And time under a minute now in this first half. Oh, the clash in the middle there. It's been a bit of a sandwich there. And assistance will be quick, quick and swift. Just checking he's okay first. Have to undo the strap. Get him back in. David Argyle. 
friends and family watching from all around the world. And this is a great representation from the UK here in Dusseldorf. And lots of the other competitors watching. There's a I think from the Team Unconquered team supporting. It's great to see how much fun everyone's having. That's an awful lot of school children on trips here today as well from around the Dusseldorf area. Service personnel have been. More than lovely. It's been from school, this is. Yeah. So, remainder of that score USA 21, United Kingdom 4, as we restart. Goal searching for Rogers. It's pinched by Martinez. And here goes Carly James. Happy just to run it down. See a little bit more tick over. Kayla Saska's attempt fell to Liz Lee. And now the United Kingdom might get the last attack of the half. This is with David Argyle. Up and over the top. The space for Anthony Booth has just come on. He can't find James Rogers though. That should just about do it for this first half. And that is half time in this semi final one. The winners through to the final a little bit later this evening. And the USA commanding really throughout. United Kingdom have had their opportunities but haven't quite managed to get it into the net. A certain competitor's birthday today. A certain USA number 12, Kevin Green. Now, Dusseldorf. I think we should that see. That breaks down just. The scores on the doors. Here we go. I think it is somebody's birthday today in the team, one of the teams. I hear actually yesterday there was also a marriage proposal. Um, so. It was on court. Kevin Green, who's celebrating in the centre, and he's had an excellent wow, first half as well. Played about two thirds of it. And look at that big grin. What a lovely thing to do to happen. And those pictures will go around the world. And everybody's celebrating his birthday. I'll tell you, getting to the final will make his birthday very special if they make him shaking his head. Um, great to see. Well, he was a key part, as ever, of the USA point scoring. Brent Garlic topping the total. But they're comfortable, 21-4 at halftime. Odds on favourites to go all the way again. The United States unbeaten so far. But it's been played in a brilliant spirit, as have all the competitions out here in the Mercosur Arena. Apologies if any of the choice language might come across. It's an illustration of the passion and the determination. Ooh. And you heard him keep going, heads up. Fantastic spirit in the UK team. Uh, up against very, very good opposition. But really playing their part so far. is on for the United Kingdom to start this second half. Yeah, he's 54, an RA veteran from Cambridgeshire, served for 21, 27 years before being diagnosed with a degenerative neurological condition. He did compete in The Hague and won silver in the wheelchair rugby. And 
was also diagnosed with scoliosis last year, but he's on here and good start. Pat Manmatrick again, inching forward the United Kingdom now, seven on uh, six points. Trigg is delivered. And his arms soar above a lot of that defense. Julius McManus is also on, as is Tony Smith. The USA rotating too. Shot clock had just gone down. David Hargal needs a little assistance again. They are pretty lightweight, these chairs. It doesn't take much to tip them over. Just watching on. Team support just making sure he's okay. And he is. It's a really good contingent from the United Kingdom. 59 competitors, an awful lot more friends and family have made the relatively short trip over here. We'll have to have another restart. Ross Freer, who's back on from Merseyside. David Argyle whipping the crowd up. Yep, rallying call there, finds Mark Trigg. And just on the lip of the basket. Nice move and good placement. Tony Smith for the United States, Lieutenant Colonel, still on active duty. There's McManus, goes for the two. Back it comes. McManus, uh, Chief Navy Diver, veteran. Oh, great catch. Gary, yeah. Gary had it, and then look, poor old Ross Freer was sandwiched. He's up and he's back in the thick of it. He was he was on his way through, wasn't he there? He found the space, but it wasn't quite enough space. Oh, it was like a hot potato there. Matrick nearly had it. As the USA surge forward again. Carly James. Staff Sergeant in the Air Force. And Smith, he's only got seven seconds to go. Carly James around the outside. Now she'll have a go, and straight in it goes. So another two points for Carly James. Well, she started the move, and she finished the move. And 23 to six. Showing great composure. Straight in there. That's Freya, and Dan, Danny Potthoff has come off. The sidelines and a first really effective interception. So here they come again. McManus for Smith. Kayla Saska on two, wearing three with the red headbands. And she's getting herself into position. I'm looking for the rebound, but the UK get it. Free it. That's everybody in blue. Moves downfield, this is Argyle. And there's two inside there to aim for, it's too long for Trigg. Neatly fielded by Kayla Saska. Really was, very accurate bounce and clean pass. Good swivel there, she was being chased by Argyle. That's a lot more. USA. In terms of banter in this second period already, we've only played about four minutes, but everybody enjoying themselves out there, encouraging those on the sidelines, but also enjoying the camaraderie and the kind of comradeship that they can get from playing against fellow veterans and those in active service as well. Deserved time out here, chance to Rehydrate, it is very warm inside the arena, and this action is non-stop. Yep. 
You're having a good time, she said. And they are. It's great to see. But they, they want to win, though. That's the, that is the bottom line, too. The start of Alfred Martinez, I think, who uh, was an active part in the timeouts and the halftime discussions yesterday. He is also down there again today and playing his part. They haven't needed a break car they in this second half. He's had a well earned breather. I'm sure we might see them potentially a little bit later on. Just under 12 minutes to go of this second half in the semi final. Again, the UK striking first from the restart. Ross Freya. Make use of the backboard there. And nicely and safely in for those two points. 23-8. That's another tumble. It doesn't take much, just leaning one way or the other, overstretching. And it's very easy to overbalance. Steve Samford having a chuckle about it too. Tara Blakely, specialist veteran from the US Army and the effort here from Tony Smith. They do get back quickly. They're very, very speedy. The US just off the outside of his right hand and beyond Matt Trigg. Stars and stripes and the strapping so on the shoulders the there. USA. On comes Gregory Walker. Kayla Saska getting a breather. USA build again. Kira Blakely. He's got Walker down one side along with McManus who's fielded this one and goes off the backboard and in. And they're up to 25. Look at the big smile on his face. He absolutely loved that, Julius McManus. Blakely looking for the pass. Oh, and just so well executed off the top of the board there. And Joy at the other end for UK. And Ross Freer have delivered the points in this one. Yeah, they were key players in the last group game, and so it's proving again here. Again, similar move for the USA from the last uh, basket. Blakely, McManus, will he go this time he does? It just grazes the edge of the rim. And now they've got to get back. This is Freer. Argyle on one side. Callier going into the center. There was an arm up above him. So the free throw for Matt Trigg. Important. Get those points on the board for the UK. 25-10 at the moment. Beautifully done. Big cheer in the crowd. One point secured. Can I get it a second time? Bounces off the back, not quite. 25-11. Fielded by McManus and downfield, down court they go again. Jerry Blakely. Smith and Pothole Ford on the right-hand side. Shot clock goes down to five. 
He'll have to aim, and does, and out it goes. And similar move to last time as well in terms of positioning. The triangle between those three players. Ross Freer now for the United Kingdom. Liz Lee is on wearing three. Also back is Jules Allen. And this is Argyle. We're into the last three seconds, though. He'll have to go and go quickly. And the whistle goes. Sometimes there just doesn't appear to be an option. And you don't want to give it to your opposition too easily. Smith on the sidelines, just down in front of the replacements. It's Blakely, UK fanning out, protecting that central area. McManus has spotted space for Smith, though, and they do do this really nicely, the USA. And a great final result. It was very effective. Really, really well done. Julius McManus combining well with his teammates. And in it goes. And that takes... <laughs> yeah, that's how it went, he says. 27-11 in this first semi-final. Here's Rogers, the UK's team captain, almost gets a basket. Fielded by Allen, here's Freer. And he's come as close as his teammate too. Yes, he... Pick up and combine surging their way forward again. So many close calls for the United Kingdom. It could be a much closer game. USA, when they've had these moments, they've been clinical. Here is Danny Pothoff on the far side. Doesn't quite make that one count. Well, they've made it count when it has mattered. More often than not, 27 points. 11 over halfway through the second half. And Danny pulled off there, US Marine Corps, staff sergeant, veteran, and a key player in this wheelchair basketball team for the USA. As the United Kingdom just try and find that basket, and it eludes them once again. Ross Freer picks up the long throw, good pass. Argal from about the free throw line, off the back again. And the tall figure of Julius McManus gets the USA attack underway. Blakely, who's been the, the key man, pivot. Martinez, Blakely, might go himself for a two and off the right hand edge. It wasn't far away, was it? What about Tony Smith now? McManus from a familiar range and off the rim again. It's difficult to stop when they put those combinations together. Blakely as a pivot in the middle of McManus, deadly on that right hand side. Here's Ross Freer. You know, they're all back defending. Blocking. A fall for Rogers. No, doesn't quite. Falls instead for Jerry Blakely. USA 10 points short at the moment of their biggest score in the competition in the opening win over Georgia. Pothoff. Now Smith. UK defending is good. Liz Lee with an arm in the way. But just enough. Of a diversion. United Kingdom with the ball. What can they do this time? Freer and Argyle combining. Just looking to see how far they can find a way through. Or is Argyle going to have a go? No. Passes it to Freer. Not quite cleanly enough. Freer will have a go though. And again, basket eludes the United Kingdom. Plenty of opportunities being created here by the United Kingdom, but just not finishing it off. Blakely, 
Martinez is on, takes up his position wide on the right-hand side, draws Rogers out of the way. That leaves a little bit of space for McManus, who can shoot again. He's missed his last couple. Some discussion on the bench. Not too much, I don't think, because things are going very well if you're a USA fan. Friet's blocking from Rogers and just to the left of the basket from Ross Friet. Just around three and a half minutes to go in this second half. USA 27, United Kingdom 11. Is Pothoff. She's got Martinez acting as a screen in front of her off the right hand edge, but Manus to follow up and get it. It bubbled a bit, but in it went, and celebrations in the <laughs> USA bench. It's a little flick of the fingers, and it drops for him. One more big game to go after this. They'll be facing the winners of the second semi-final. One of the two team on Concords against France who made it through from the pool stage. There's Martinez. Blakely. This time all the support on the other side. He's still going. McManus has run into his own player, but provides a good block on Argyle. This is Danny Pothoff. We're inside the last three seconds on the shot clock, and Martinez nearly. 29-11. Just over two minutes to go, and a timeout. And the USA passing is sublime. They seem to instinctively know where to be. The ability to catch the ball with one arm as well, one hand. So we must be feeling good right now. We'll have a bit of a break between this and the gold medal match. Two losing semi-finalists competing also later on today to pick up a bronze. And a word about our volunteers here. They are absolutely magnificent, thousands of them helping out at the Invictus Games and so helpful. And the fans enjoying the experience as well. Uh, the city of Dusseldorf has really taken this competition and the competitors to its heart. The attendances have been excellent right the way through from the start of the athletics and powerlifting competitions through to the wheelchair rugby, the indoor rowing, which was a real spectacle here on the main stage of the Merkel Spiel Arena. And today, the swimming competition starts. Well, still to come, we'll have archery and cycling too. And the remainder of the wheelchair basketball. And the sitting volleyball. And the sitting volleyball on this court from tomorrow. Many of these players will be taking part in that as well. Here's Argyle for the United Kingdom making great progress towards the net. Oh, and that one was close to another chance. It's bobbling but picked up by the USA defence. And they're away again. They've looked pretty solid at the back, haven't they? They know where to go and what to do. Here's Blakely has ended up playing much of the game, actually. Such a, a key role takes it on from Garlic when he's not on court. Here's Orlinger. He's been used more sparingly. That's a one for Garrett. I didn't expect it, but took it well. In and around, it bounces, but it doesn't drop. That was such an awkward position there for him as well, but <laughs> he had a wry smile. Here's Jules Allen. Just over a minute to go for the United Kingdom to pick up more points. Garrett's in there doing some sterling defensive work too. Blakely in a four-way scrap for the ball, which pops out for Liz Lee here. Arkar, Rogers in the center, he takes it, he takes aim, and off the rim it goes again. I think that's been the main difference, the shooting 
prowess and the success of the shots into the basket for the USA. And they've just gone in and wheeling his way around. Like a lion prowling on the outside there, isn't he? And here we go. Olinger and the rebound clocks Leslie on the shoulder. Only five seconds on the shot clock left. Olinger will have to release it quickly and does. But it doesn't drop. And is the time for one more surge from the United Kingdom here? Argyle powering his way up to the other end. Against the clock. Just and too much for Lee to do, wasn't it, in the end? And not on this occasion. And that is us. What a game, what a performance from this team from the United States. They are into the final of the wheelchair basketball competition. And they have looked unstoppable in all of their games. Their opposition, the United Kingdom, they gave it their all, absolutely gave it their all. They had opportunities, but the baskets largely eluded them. There is the final result in this first semi-final, USA 29, United Kingdom 10. A really good one to watch, Jonathan. Thoroughly entertaining. They have been an entertaining side right from the off, and the United Kingdom played their part in another very, very memorable game on the centre court here at the Mercosur Arena. Uh, rightly getting loaded by everybody inside. It's proved a very popular competition. Pateri Duke of Sussex was here earlier on today with his wife to watch Ukraine and Australia playing their final pool game. And so we'll have a short break before the second semi-final, but the USA know they have their place booked in the showpiece this evening. The United Kingdom will fight for bronze against one of the two teams in our second semi-final. The first of the Team Unconquered, put together by nations who may not have enough to perform on their own as a team. That's mainly made up, entirely made up, of the Netherlands and Germany. And they will be in action against France, who've come through the pool stage. Here's the stats for you, and you can see how dominant it was on the left-hand side by the USA. We know the points, 29 to 10. The three points from the free throws, and just a bit better in every area. And look at the atmosphere inside this arena. It is just fantastic. They won't have long to wait for the next entertainment on centre court. There's been two here, which have seen action either side of the main stage. Field one delivering in terms of the entertainment value as well. The semi-finals and the final will be on this main centre court. And next up, in a few moments' time, when these two have taken the adulation of the crowd and said their goodbyes, will be Team Unconquered, the first of those Team Unconquered, and France. shortly to warm up but for now let's have one last cheer for our first semi-final USA and United Kingdom Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Annika Hutzler. I am representing Team US. I am competing in track, field, swimming, and table tennis, and I am a right below knee amputee. The Invictus Games really conceptualizes the fact that we are here to show what we are able to push through and what we're able to accomplish just with the power of our mindset. The fact that there are competitors here from different countries, different branches, different injuries, different stories, but we all come together because we all have one common goal. My story began when I enlisted into boot camp. I was in the Marine Corps and I enlisted into boot camp and I started feeling pain in my foot. And I just was told, hey, that's normal. The Marine Corps loves to say pain is weakness leaving the body. So I just thought this is normal pain. And I kept that mindset all the way to finish boot camp, to finish my combat training. And then eventually the pain got too bad. So I went to medical. And when I went to medical, they told me, you have a stress fracture. So my bone was broken a little bit in my foot. They put me in a walking boot, and when the normal recovery time for a stress fracture didn't happen, when we got to the end of the eight weeks and my foot wasn't healed, they did an MRI, and my doctor came in on February 1st, 2018, he said, so you never had a stress fracture, but you do have a tumor, but don't freak out. And at that point, I honestly was in shock. I was like, I have a tumor, like, that's, not what I thought I was coming in here to be told. And so I was like, so what's our next step? And we began trying to save the foot. And there was a lot of surgeries done, a lot of procedures done to try to shrink the tumor, to try to remove the tumor, and some things that ended very poorly, which ended in infection, ended in nerve pain, ended in um, scar tissue, nerve damage. And so I looked at my doctor one day and I said, how many more times are we gonna do this surgery to try to remove the tumor before there's so much scar tissue, before there's so much pain, before it's not worth saving anymore? And my doctor told me, I give it five to 10 years. And so at 22 years old, I said, cut it off now. I'm not waiting the next five to 10 years, wasting my life knowing that this is inevitable. On February 2nd, 2019, they amputated my right leg below the knee and was the best day of my life. Because during this time that they were trying to save my leg, I had so many life threatening and I was in and out of hospitals. I was just going doctor visit to doctor visit. And I think it's very easy for us as individuals to think, why me? Why is this happening to me? Like, it's, it gets very frustrating and very discouraging. I saw so many people be successful with their amputations. I have a very difficult time with how my service ended in the military. Why am I the person that is representing Team US when other people had a, in my opinion, a more realistic military experience? But the reality is there's other people out there like me. I think the Invictus Games represents resiliency, community, and being unconquerable. Her name is Hope, and she's 12 weeks old. She's an amazing dog. Her name is Hope because she gives us hope after a difficult period. I have PTSD with my accident. She is going helping me in the public areas to be a service dog. Victus means being together with other people who have injuries. What you see and what you can see, being together with family is very important for me. She's my everything. <laughs> My name is Volodymyr Hara, I am from Ukraine. Uh, in this game I will try and uh, shot archer, uh, pool, uh, swimming and um, uh, table tennis.
my friends, volunteer, uh, tell me about the Viking Tate, tell what is this, tell the uh, soldiers and officers who have something damaged can be uh, in the try in the sport when uh, this uh, guy wants. And uh, I think this is cool because uh, I've been, I was not a professional sportsman, but I can uh, feel the same like in the Paralympics. When I finished uh, study in the military academy, uh, Russia was annexing Crimea. This is be 2014 year. Uh, my company was uh, start fighting in the Lugansk region. And uh, we have many uh, explains, uh, many uh, missions. And uh, one of these missions with this is reconnaissance artillery. I've been the higher building. This is maybe 11 or 12 floor. And uh, uh, I was help another troops. This is be a Ukrainian uh, air forces who uh, stay in the Lugansk airport. And we was protect this airport. And uh, Russian troops come behind uh, this uh, uh, position. And I was reconnaissance artillery. And uh, in the same moment, uh, uh, enemy artillery shot, we be explosion behind me. So in this time, this has happened 5th September in 2014, and uh, I have damaged my right arm and I'm not convulsed because my spalnar colon was totally destroyed. If this guy see my story or see me on TV, on the social media, I want they, we, uh, this guy start and girl start, start in sport. Maybe not come to the game another year, but try. Sport uh, make your body stronger and your mind more clear. I want the guys who have the same damage or easier or harder, this doesn't matter. Just start uh, being the sports. Try swimming pool, try running, try in the bicycle. This is uh, not uh, important. And be independent. Not stay at home all day, not being the parents, you must do something. And maybe you be a good programmer or a good teacher, but sport help you uh, make your dreams. Your mind be clear and your body start to be stronger. In Victor Gay for me, this is respect, relationship and winner.
Comment ça va, mesdames et messieurs? Can I get a. Allez, le bleu, allez. Any French fans up there? But you're not singing, why are you not singing, monsieur? Very nice, very nice. Yeah, yeah that's their singing. Well, what about the Dutchies? Do you have a song that we can join in? Oh, that's a hard one. Let me think on that. Uh, I, I got one for Germany. I, I, I'm sure they're Das fängt eigentlich auch französisch an. Ich glaube, die meisten von euch werden es kennen. Ali, Ali, eine Straße. Aber das geht noch lauter. Eine Straße ohne Bäume. Oh, very nice, very nice. Das ist ein Lied, das France and Germany together as the teams are leaving for the official entry. Uh, did you know? Have you found anything for the Dutchies so far? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Do you want some exciting music before they have their official come up? Welcome to the Merkurspiel Arena for this second semi-final of the wheelchair basketball competition at the Invictus Games in Dusseldorf. The first won by the United States of America against the United Kingdom. They took their place in the final later on today, German time. The UK will be in the bronze medal match and one of these two will join the United States pretty soon. We'll be seeing both teams coming out onto the center court, both with different passages to the last four, both coming through their group in different fashions. Team Unconquered, made up of German and Dutch competitors. The French, you will notice when they come out and when the names are read out. And from the team sheets, they're just using Christian In names. Game, First up, we'll get the introduction please of the match officials. And here comes Team Unconquered. And largely made up of German competitors, hence a really strong support from the locals here in Dusseldorf and surrounding areas. Made up of German and Dutch players, this Unconquered team, and they have been unconquered in this wheelchair basketball. Very, very impressive indeed. Means over Canada, Ukraine, Australia, and the UK to get to this point. Can they see this one through and get all the way to the final? And the locals, the German fans, would, the Dutch fans as well, would absolutely love that. It's Team Unconquered, and there they are. There's the team list. And all the players being used at some point during this game. Friends and families and fans turning out in their hundreds to support this team. There's at the end is Martin Seisling, key player in those successes in the group games. And here is their opposition, the team from France. France have been beaten, but that points tally and the fact that they won their remaining games was good enough to get them here. They beat the second of the unconquered teams. They had a narrow win over Georgia, only 11 points to 10. Georgia led for a long time in that game. France outscoring them late on. They were beaten quite heavily by the United States, but came back to beat New Zealand in the final game that sealed their place earlier on today. They had danger players as far as the other team on Concord are concerned. They'll have to keep quiet the likes of Jean Charles and Jean Pierre, who have been regular scorers. Yeah, Jean here in particular running the show in a couple of games that I commentated on in the group. The bully figure, strong figure, John Pierre. Look out for him, number eight. 
And Zhao Xiao at number 24. Lots of the French supporters, the teammates all out to support them. There's the starting five for Team Unconquered. One, and that was pretty much the team that started in their previous game. But they will make use of the squad, and there's the starting five for the French team. And those two figures are in. Jean-Pierre and Jean-Charles. Jean-Charles at number eight, and Jean-Pierre at number 24. It's a lovely thing, this team unconquered. It's uh, the spirit of the Invictus Games embodied. Teams put together in all sports to bring out the best in those nations that are not able perhaps to put together teams of enough themselves. So in the case of the Unconquered 2, it's a majority of uh, players of English speaking. Chris Armstrong involved who was part of the Team UK and were really enjoying the competition. With Team Unconquered 1 also, we have Germans and Dutch in the team and I guess that might have meant they potentially have had a little bit more time to be together as opposed to teams from other countries pulling together at the, the last minute. So that might have helped them in terms of their performances as well, knowing each other so well. There's their coach. They certainly look as if they play as a team, as do this French team. Could be really close to on this. France have been dogged when they've needed to be. They have put an awful lot of points on some of the teams, but everybody has come off second best in the United States. There was no real shame in losing that one. Team Unconquered have played like a team that have been together much longer than they actually have. It's going to come down to fine margins, I think, in many respects. This one, as again, like the first one, the pool stage saw three periods of eight minutes. We'll have two periods of 15 minutes between these two to decide who will reach the final. French mascot's going to get awfully hot. He's very excited inside that suit. Here we go. Tip off one by France. Sulema. Strapped heavily into the chair, which is a little higher to support his back. You mentioned about Jean Pierre. Here he is providing the pass for Brice. Fielded by Kevin Koitka. He and this man, Martin Neubauer, Neugebauer, have been frequent scorers. Koitka off the front of the rim. He's going to be the one, like Frank Garlic for the US, that builds the moves and moves into the front court. John Shaw making moves towards the other end. Very powerful player. Koitker has fielded it. This is uh, Missal Palik. France getting back. Here is Koitka. Taking it wide this time. Supporters from Holger Kunzelmann, but Koika might just have to go himself. The shot clock ticking away. And the ball slipping away from Palik. Jean-Pierre. France building from the back. Looking around both sides you can see the eyes going watching where his teammates are going nice clean direct pass to number eight and a good shot but not in that net you will see those two looking for each other quite regularly the axis of france's scoring in majority of their games jean charles and uh, jean pierre Likewise, Neugebauer, who's plowing a route through the middle. He wasn't found in the end. It was uh, Jörg Heinrichs who decided to go himself. Snatch by France and Jean-Pierre. Head down and heading towards that net. 
in that area. And hanging on to that ball as if his life depended on it. But there was an infringement. Suleiman starts again for France behind that baseline. Jean Pierre jostling for position in the middle. Please can't quite stretch enough. The shot clock might have beaten them in any case. Yeah, just keep an eye on that clock because it is a very important part of the game. And the players know they're up against it. Just elapsed before Jean Pierre got his shot away. So relatively quiet start for both teams here. Certainly compared to the first semi-final that we had. And players still finding their way around the court. An effort there from Team Unconquered. I love the way Jean Pierre cuddles and <laughs> hangs on to that ball. It's mine. And he's come all the way downfield, and that was nicely played to Frederic. And in goes the first basket. France take the lead with a two pointer from Frederic. And it was that powerful search forward by Jean Pierre passing to Frederic and into the net for the first score of the game. defense but it wasn't enough it wasn't enough Joachim Riechs he's pulled them level to 2-2 two, two. familiar side of Jean-Pierre coming forward again Brice with the Really good reach. He's got long arms, but it bounces out for Jean Charles. This is Suleiman. Good defense there from the lovely German team. Number seven, Ramona Team. Substitution for Team Unconquered. On comes Dennis Seesing. Former paratrooper takes his place down in the front court. This is Koitka who went for it himself and goes early. That's a brilliant basket from the man who's led from the front as far as Team Unconquered are concerned. Kevin Koitka. Just inside the three point line. Jean Charles, will it drop? Yes, it does. An immediate repost. Yep, tantalizingly dangled on the rim there, but down it came. Oh, like you say, we had a tentative slow start, and that is four baskets in a row. There's Martin Seasling for Team Unconquered. It makes a glorious sound when it hits the front rim of the basket. And here's Jean Pierre. On the break, does he have any support? Will he go himself? He will. Here he goes. Second chance on the rebound, but he was blocked off. Tremendous energy, Jean Pierre. And great control of the chair, too. I forget what's happening off the ball and the, uh, the other competitors blocking, the tactical blocking that goes on. They're looking to try and make a change, team unconquered. Trying to bring replacement on. That's number two, Ramona team. One of the two women 
in this team list. And another attempt on the basket grabbed by the number five from Team Unconquered, Lucille Palik. And it's Team Unconquered's chance to surge towards the other end. Blocked there by Jean-Pierre. <laughs> he nabs the ball from him. <laughs> Beautifully done. Um, and off he goes, and what a pass, what a pass. Just looking for more support, and here's the support, the number eight. Oh, and it drops. It's a lovely move from France. Jean-Pierre and Brice, and then that man Jean-Charles again, sharing the points, him and Jean-Pierre. Just hung there momentarily before dropping, and France have got themselves a lead. And we go to the first time out of the game. Well, it's to choose between the two teams thus far, as the score suggests. She says when you get the uh, ball back, lift your head up. You'll be able to make the pass. I did that well on the last attack to score that last basket. Just over seven minutes of this first half to go. That's totally thought we'd be fun. The winners will play the USC. In the final later this evening. And it loses into that bronze medal game against the United Kingdom. Great atmosphere inside here for this semi final. And the in house presenter doing a great job with the music and the entertainment between the gaps in play. As we get back underway, Team Unconquered 1, Team Unconquered 1, 4, France 6. Is uh, Henrichs who's offloaded it to Koika, and it's another of those shots from deep. We have very rarely seen a team bag three pointers in this competition. It has happened, but I think only once or twice. Just there's one this morning in the preliminary games that I saw. And charging into the area there, into position to help his teammate to pick up on the rebound. Still went to Team Unconquered though. Big stretch, couldn't quite manage that one. Neugebar with the second follow-up attempt. So a really good claim on the rebound from Hinrichs in the first place. This is Suleiman as France get us off and started again. They've got eight seconds to get out of uh, the backcourt. Nobody's fallen foul of that rule so far. Here's Jean-Pierre. Six to go. France with a slender lead. Jean-Pierre allowed to progress in a chance to shoot presents itself. Frederick doesn't get there. So Mandy Kraft, who's just come on, will try and bring it away. Restart for Team Unconquered, just short of halfway. Henriks for Koitka. You wonder what he's going to do, he's going to have another go here. He's been protected by his teammates. Just not falling for him there. Still trailing by two. It's another good stretch from Brice with the arm protectors on. Here's Suleiman, who's just given that a little too much, but it's Jean Charles on the rebound. Over he goes. Now the basket, it's eight points for France, and I think they'll have some free throws to come here by the sound of it. Oh, beautifully done. There was an infringement, there was a foul. So France have the chance to build on that score here. And it will be the number eight, 
Zhou Shao takes a deep breath. These points are absolutely crucial. Look at that. Absolute perfection. Just the one free throw on this occasion. That's how to do it, isn't it? Cleanly into the basket. The fans jump up and cheer. We went 11 minutes or so, or we went four minutes down to the 11 minute mark or so without any points. It's been competent and consistent from France since that point. Inside the last four and a half. We've managed to open up a little bit of daylight with five unanswered points. That man, Kevin Koika, coming closest for Team Unconquer to go a little closer. Henriks doesn't make it. This is Brice, and this is where France have been good, looking up and finding teammates, but there's a big double block from Cissing and Noy Gabar. Brice again, Jean Charles wheels his way out to the left. Jean Pierre. Oh, with the follow up and the rebound. Great positioning from him again. You just know that something will happen. Look at that into the net. And France have a little bit of momentum building now in this game. And at the heart of it all is that man. What is the Team of Concord response? And it's a Brilliant response, an absolutely fantastic response from Team Unconquered to take them to six. And again, Kevin Koinka didn't touch the rim, straight through the center. And brought it back to within five, with three minutes remaining in the first half. Jean-Pierre to place over on that far side. jean Charlotte, a good position, who's measured it, and off the left-hand rim. Henrichs, France backtracking. That would fall in nicely for Seasing, but the foul had already been given. Just under two and a half minutes of this first half. waits for the free throw that he thinks is coming. It's not. He's going to have to go over to the side, I think, and restart. Koitka. The long, lanky arms of Brice in front of him there. Ceasing from deep, just touching the front wheels on that three throw, three-point line. Says that after him, isn't he? Straight after him, the long, tall figure trying to block anything, trying to block the ball through the nice bounce pass. And cooling things down, Jean Pierre finds his teammate who has a shot on the net. Not quite. I had to get that one away quickly. The shot clock was ticking down. Team on Kong could have rescued that one. This is Noiga Bar. I think they've taken too long to get out of the backcourt because they lost possession. Jean-Pierre directs where he wants his teammate to go. Jean-Charles interchanging nicely here and around the back goes that man again. <laughs> He's going to get the points. That was such a lovely, lovely move. You can tell they practiced that one in training. And catching out the unconquered defense. But he still had to finish the job off in the net. 
Ali did. And a free throw to boot. Well, it's been impressive from France over the course of the last seven minutes. That one just hits the back and goes out. The rebound falls kindly. That's uh, a similar shot. Edging towards the end of this first half. France have built up a decent lead here. That's been impressive. Seven points clear as it stands. Unless Timon Conquered can pick up something in the last play of this first half through Kevin Koika. And they're going to have the harder work to do in the second period. Swatted away by Brice, and that's picked up by Frazeric. And if they can rush it, then maybe there are more points on offer for France. This is the man they'd want on the ball. He'll have to get rid of it quickly, though. Just in time. And he misses the basket with the halftime score at 13 points to six in France's favor. Decent half, exciting half of end to end wheelchair basketball, but France taking their chances. More clinical, more active and effective when it mattered. And a slow start to the half, but it really did warm up. Plenty of great action. And yes, the clinical finishing of France suggesting that five point gap. But still, a lot to play for in that second half. And who knows what the team talk will bring to and perhaps some changes in the positional aspects of the team or fresh fresh approach it's amazing what the difference a couple of players swapped on can do in terms of energy a few that haven't played yet that did perform significant minutes in the uh, pool stages the likes uh, Remco Castellan and uh, Gerard van Leeuwen there's the stats we know the points. Six to three in terms of the free throws. Six to three in terms of the field goals, which suggests the France advantage. 13-6. Okay, on the count of three, as loud as you can, everybody on this side. There are only four points in it. In their last three games, Team Unconquered, they beat Australia 8-4, Ukraine 12-8, and Canada 16-10. So they've all been tight. Only the victory in their opening game against the United Kingdom was uh, by a bigger margin. And they've kept themselves in touch in all of them. It'll only take a couple of unanswered scores here to bring it back to 13-10, and that's how quickly games can change. And utilizing the squad as well will be key. Kevin Kuyka calling on his teammates to fight get themselves back into the game it wouldn't take too much there isn't much of a, a halftime break either we're inside the last few seconds of it as you can see on the countdown clock just a couple of minutes to catch your breath and take on some liquids before they go again i tell you that it was very looked a very passionate uh, direct speech from kevin koika as well Lots of military in supporting, German military in supporting this team, unconquered. And lots of Dutch fans as well. And it is Team Unconquered who get us back underway again with Koika. Sizing up a basket from just by that three-point line. Now it's a race to see who can get there first. It should roll out beyond the baseline. Oh, 
They need the next score, really, and a couple of unanswered scores would get them right back in within touching distance. Keeping that one quiet is also going to be key for them in the second half. Easier said than done, as everyone has proved so far. It's a good claim on the rebounds. Oh, Jacques Charles has rescued it. And he really did well there, didn't he? Back to Jean Pierre. It's a long range effort. Did he get that out in time? He did. Shot clock went back to 14 on the second rebound. And it's France who scored first in the second half. So that one does count with the rebound. And there he is. Really good score. There's a block there by Jean Pierre on uh, one of the team unconquered men right in the centre. Kunzmann. Look of surprise on his face. The referee's very good about explaining their decisions succinctly and briefly. And now to be able to move on. It did look like it was going to be their ball. Follow the block on Kunzeman. Here's Hinrichs. And here is Koi Karen, the space for Neuge Bar. And they've not had that kind of position too often, but they're not quite swift enough on the rebound. And here come the French again. Lost by Suleiman, pinched by Koi And here is Martin Neuge Bar. This is looking more likely. Nice passing. This one's gone. As we see, Apalik had his shot. But he was impeded. And so he will have the chance at the free throw. Three point is precious now for Team Unconquered in the second half. Just catches the outside front rim. And not on this occasion. Missed the opportunity there. However. an encroachment from France, uh, another free throw. Third time lucky. A chance missed there for Team Unconquered. And you look at too many of them. This French team have really stepped up in this game. Jean-Pierre for uh, Hatman Brice and uh, Jean-Charles. <laughs> oh, round the back door, Jean-Pierre. And it's in. What a, what a great move there from Team France. Louis scooted round the outside there into position. And Team Unconquered could do nothing about that. It's caught them out on a couple of occasions. Nine points of their 17 now for that man. All right, everybody, I want to please ask you to put your hands in front of I have to start scoring. I have to start ticking over the scoreboard quite quickly. And fourth, let's go. 
At the moment, it's France who are looking like taking their position in the showpiece final. involved in the, the dance moves in the audience while we wait for the players to come back onto the court. A great day out here at the Invictus Games in the Invictus Village as well. And you can try the sports too. Lots of food and drink. Fantastic day for everybody. Back underway. Quick cut from Dehu. Nailed it. Absolutely brilliant. That's the kind of boost that they needed. What a difference that makes to the scoreboard in terms of Team Unconquered. Oh, an absolute peach of a basket there from France, from Team Unconquered. Against this very good French team who have really stepped up in this game. Oh. Jean-Pierre with the throw out to Frédéric on that far side. Unbalanced. By a hit from that side. France will restart. Throw that man, Suleiman. Jean Pierre uh, embraces, got the reach of uh, Noy Gabar. It bounces to Frederick, but the whistle has already gone. German and Dutch fans on that side, trying to urge their team on, get behind them and get them back into the game. This man could certainly help with that. He's been free scoring, he's gone for the three. Just fell short. It's a powerful weapon to have in your team. They know, his teammates know he can do it if they can get him into a position and get the ball to him. And the French will know they can't give him any space. More time. Jean Charles from the free throw line. And still got a healthy lead. Nine points the gap as we enter the final ten minutes of action. Quick cap propelling himself. Speedily forward, looking to nip in around the right-hand side. Jean-Pierre is effective. <laughs> what a block that was. <laughs> Defending as he is yep. on the attack. Hinrichs. He's watching him. Jean-Pierre is after him again. Beaten by the shot clock. Just didn't have the space to get the pass or the shot away. A little bit of frustration on his face there. his hand as well. Jean-Pierre almost within range. Brace for the two. Oh. That was beautifully done. Jean-Pierre spotted his teammate there. Great catch, nice clean catch. And into the basket it goes. And the supporters France enjoying that moment takes them to 19 now France to 10. Team on Conquer just getting a basket while you're watching that replay. Change two with the introduction of Bandy Graf. Here's Jean Pierre though. Change the angle and Brice gets another two. Yep, they all thought that Jean Pierre was going to shoot himself. 
and he looked that way, but his teammate was ready waiting. Look at this. That's a super pass. A super basket. Another timeout. The scoreboard ticking on a little further. No sooner had they withdrawn a little closer than France edged ahead again. It's a healthy lead at the moment. It's been a difficult lead to eat into all game. Many of these competitors nowhere near finished as yet. Many of them, like that man Denis Seesing, who you just saw, will be taking part in subsequent competitions. The cycling still to come. Archery for Seesing is uh, a key part of his recovery. Coin Cup will also be in the archery and indeed the table tennis, which begins today and carries on tomorrow. Every sport is different. Every sport brings a different aspect to their recovery in terms of the physical element. It's a crucial period of the game, isn't it, for this team unconquered. They have shown the power of bringing two countries and old teammates and comrades together. Now they need to dig deep. They've had a very successful future basketball competition. But they're not out of it yet by any means, especially with players like that. And we know what he's capable of. So here they go. It is Neugebauer. They've rung the changes. Gerard Fahar is on wearing eight. That wasn't far away, that attempt on the basket, but it's France who pick up. Jean-Pierre surging, powering towards the other end to the basket to number 25. And in it goes. Brice. Lead out to 13. He's made it look easy again with that long reach. To it yet. This is Neugebauer who has been a useful source of points, but that one falls short. Ramon team is also on. Four team unconquered, but they trail by 13. Just get out the backcourt in time. Muscles his way through, doesn't he? That's uh, another tumble. Reaching back to try and pick that off Frederick's hands. Neugebar. France in control in the driving seat and as it stands with six and a half minutes to go heading for the gold medal match his base found by Jean-Pierre there was a, a block <laughs> Jean-Charles has nailed the basket they'll take that to edge out to 25 another lovely shot from that man I do sense that Team Unconquered really need to get some scores on the board now with just over six minutes to go that's quite a sizable lead now for France good cut the back rim it's fielded nicely by Palik the whistle's gone This could be useful if they can get it. It's Kunzman who had the shot, so it'll be he who takes the free throws. Olga Kunzman. In position, smiling away. Just making sure he's 
fully settled and composed, and they've done this hundreds and hundreds of times successfully, but in a game like this, entirely different. What you do in training doesn't necessarily translate into the field of play. That's too high. And they missed the chance again. Those big hands of Jean Pierre grab that ball. He's progressed all the way. Brace. Well, it's been an effective partnership in this game, hasn't it? Didn't work on that occasion, but it's worked pretty much most of the game. He's got a huge reach, big, long arms, Francis, number 25. He's proved difficult to stop as Koitka goes off the rim. And Kunzemann has found it. Second chance for Hinrich, who hits the left of the backboard. And Palak finally... Finally, Palak makes the difference. It was bobbing around, bouncing off the net, off the rim. And finally, into the basket for Team Unconquered. I think very casual. <laughs> These uh, recent restarts, France, happy just to roll the ball on the floor. Jean-Pierre. To Brice again, no one's been able to outreach him. And that has been the move, hasn't it, throughout? That's been the partnership that has really worked so effectively for France in this game. In it goes. France building on that lead now all the time. Koik has been unlucky, he's just hit one side of the rim or the other, every time he's shot in the second half. Another timeout. We start there from Team Unconquered. Just over three and a half minutes to go in this second half. And Koika's going to try again. Is it going to go in this time? Oh, he's been so unlucky. He's been so close. France comfortable. 13 point lead. They're just slowing the game down as much as they can, really, running down the clock. Jean-Pierre, Frédéric, he'll have a second go, Jean-Charles sets himself and picks up another two. Well, he's been quiet of late in terms of scoring, but good time to score in terms of the French team. Good execution. That will be a timeout. No, it's in the bag. It's a case of just doing the sensible things and seeing it out. Keep that will be possession, hanging onto the ball for as long as you're allowed, not making any mistakes. Shy of three minutes to go. 27-12 is the score. France on their way to the gold medal match against the United States. The reigning champions, the country who have dominated this competition over the course of the Invictus Games. I'll tell you, win, lose or draw, they're all having a great time out there.
there's just a few more minutes of excitement left for these supporters who will be back for this evening's session German time for the bronze medal match and the gold medal match plenty to do in the meantime around the Invictus Games Park volunteers having the time of their lives here and as Seesing joins the action this final two and a half minutes or so for Team Unconquered to see if they can. You always got to believe, don't you? Grazes the edge, and it's a big overarm from Brice. It's too big, even for Jean Pierre. He's not going to get that. <laughs> Maybe if the game had been slightly closer, he might have gone for it, but he's. Good, good call, really, I think, from Jean Pierre. So Seasing taking over that role from Koitkerov, leading things out. Andy Graf. Marking an area there from Team France, not allowing the pass of the shot, and then the wayward pass, and Jean-Pierre picking up. Oh, was it just out there, I think? Just had a wheel over the sideline. Ninety seconds to go. Are oh, there more points on offer for Team Unconquered to make sure they can get the final score of the match? Here's Seasing ahead of him. Here's Jared for Hart, and he's rolling to within distance if he wants to take it on. Ten seconds on the shot clock as Mandy Calf hits the rim. Now Jean Charles can secure possession for France. Inside the last minute. The French flags are waving. Hey, team on Concord one have had a great competition. And have fought right to the very, very end. Are they going to finish now with a flourish in this game against France? Ceasing, 40 seconds on the clock. Oh, that was close. You wanted that one to go in, didn't you? You really did. Emmanuel for France on wearing 99, grabbing the rebound. Might have been the final chance for Team Unconquered to improve on their 12 points. They were the only unbeaten side in their group. USA sailing through the other side of the draw. They have met their match in France here, Emmanuel. And they've made the changes, France. There is no basket there. And the clock is running down. 17 seconds. Possession with Team Unconquered. There's a one more final effort from them. The crowd are counting down along with the clock. The final effort just goes wide. And the French coach can barely contain her emotions as they make it through to the gold medal match. You can see just how much it means to this team and their coach. Sania El Atalati, there she is hugging the players. And even the French cockerel is having a say out on that court. Well, they really stepped up in this semi-final France. They had their moments in the group games and they had some difficult games, but they really have come through on this one and a deserved win in the end. Team Unconquered will absolutely feel they gave it their all and they will play in the bronze medal game against the United Kingdom, but France go forward to that gold medal game against the USA.